Hello, it's Nikki. Welcome to another character quest video. So today is Mr. Zhongli's turn. <laughs> We're doing both acts in this video, so this is going to be a long video. So strap in. Um, feel free to watch this in chunks if you don't want to watch through it all at the same time. But onto the table of contents. First up, we have story quest. Then we're going to be doing demos and trailers. Then all his lore and voice lines. Then we're going to be going into theories. And then finally, the staple on this channel, the character log, which is when I talk about my personal thoughts and opinions on the character, my own kind of analysis of them, where I see them going in the future, um, and their arcs and all that stuff. So without further ado, let's get into it. If you guys are new to this channel and you happen to be watching this and haven't watched my playthrough yet, I highly suggest you go watch part 11, um, which are essentially the Leeway Arc and Quest finale um, with Zhongli and everything, because my opinions in this video are heavily, are <laughs> heavily formed from uh, that video. So um, how do we get onto this boat? So if you're lost as to why I'm feeling certain, Okay. <laughs> okay, just drowned. That's fine. It's fine. Wow, I feel really stupid. Let's try again. But yeah, if you haven't seen it, I, I recommend it. It's not like necessary, obviously, but if you're wanting context onto why I feel a certain way towards Zhongli, then it, it'll it'll be helpful to see that or to watch it. At least the ending. <laughs> because I was very hurt by Zhongli lying to us, okay? I let him waltz into my heart, red carpet down and everything. And then he turned out to be working with Senora and my heart shattered, okay? <laughs> How do we get up here? Do I have to like finesse my way up? Okay, I can probably shimmy along this, right? Or no? Here we go. Okay, sweet. I don't know if that's how I'm supposed to get on the boat, but I'm on the boat. Uh oh. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> An unconventional entrance? I guess it is odd to see someone like gliding to the boat from a nearby cliff. <laughs> What? What? What is this boat? A luxury yacht or something? Ooh, it's exclusive. Oh. Okay. Okay, well. Oh wow, she <laughs> she's really nice. She's like, I have to have you leave because you have to have an invitation, but go try and get one from the guests. Oh, there he is. Feeling some type of way. This is our first interaction with him uh, since the leeway quests, at least for me. Oh! <laughs> mm -hmm. Sir! Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, the guy didn't see me there either, apparently. <laughs> Who's this lady? Archaeologist? Okay. He called us his friends? What? いろいろと<笑> This is what he does in his free time? Discuss his own history with uh, 
先人たちは功績を精錬し、諸国と貿易を展開したのは誰もが知っているだろう。今のリーウェイには全大陸で唯一モラを製造できる権利がある。Oh, wow. そして最初のモラは数千年前にガンオーテイ君が作ったと考えられる。That's why Liyue is so wealthy. それから、このようなモラは、記念品として今も大事に保存されていると思うわ。例えば、リンユエを管理する七星は、就任前に秘密裏に行われる儀式があって、いやいや、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、私の研究だと、Didn't Morak say that he like, used his gnosis to make Mora? Or... Am I remembering that wrong? Hahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahah
I don't know. It just it depends on what the contract was. He didn't say good versus evil, did he? He said who broke their contracts. So, and again, who knows what those what the terms of those contracts were? I mean, I obviously would like to believe this, but <laughs> he was so uh, good at deceiving us before. My heart is reluctant to openly accept information like this. I want to, though. But I wanted to believe he trusted us before <laughs> and uh, was close with us before. And that didn't go very well for me. So I'm going to take this information but, with a grain of salt. God of Saul. In battle. Oh my god. That's quite a claim. That's. It can't be true. No. So, I'm to Okay. That wasn't a hard yes or no. The beginning. Please. The beginning. What? Excuse me? Of course the Fatui are freaking here. They're everywhere. I'm glad we're on the same page, Lumi. So? Stop y'all. Didn't stop y'all before. That's not reassuring. That's also not reassuring. Mm -hmm. それで王城堂の勝利先生は物知りだと聞いて、俺の顧問になってほしく王城堂に大金を支払ったんだ。オッケー。つまりは王城堂の仕事だな。We have to be careful when dealing with them. We have to be careful. 仕事なら仕方ないさ。お城堂には世話になっているからな。さすが勝利先生。じゃあ、今すぐ出発しようか。待って。私もついてていい。私も。わあ。インバイティングヒムセルフアロング。では、先ほどの話はまた後にしよう。そう。お前も一緒に来い
and we were running errands and then he betrayed my trust and then that really was an ouch you know what I mean so I don't want to I don't want an ouchie again okay <laughs> oh, but I want to believe the best of him okay let's see how this goes we have a very interesting group あの、ガンオテ君は岩の槍を海に投げ、魔人を封印した。うん。<笑> ただ、実質。彼の違いや。それから海水や重力の影響で、その多くは海の底に沈んだんだ。ほいしょ。その he gave up his gnosis, but like what, what, what part of his power does he still have? <笑>うずの魔人が大波を引き起こした影響で何かが見つかるかもしれない。つまりちゃんと探せばきっと大儲けできる。<笑> では俺は友人と共に行くことにする。雑学はわかるが、プロの考古学者の前で恥をかくのは遠慮したいからな。え？でエクスパート。私。なんだ。あんたの本職だろう。なぜ？わかったわ。で、では案内するわ。オッケー
モラで言えば一番わかりやすいだろう、no. まさにリーユへの伝統だ二人とも少し落ち着け Thank you お互い見つけたものを一緒に確認しよう I was waiting for him to step in My goodness hmm. そちらが見つけたものは確かに渦の魔人の影響で岸に上がったものだが魔人とは関係がないな一方俺たちが見つけた石板には不思議な模様がある。OK。早くそれを俺に渡せ。Excuse you!What the fuck? <笑>これで収穫はありだな。This guy has no fucking manners. <笑>他のものも少し分かる。He didn't snatch that out of Zhongli's hand, did he? He didn't show that it did, but with the way the sentences were phrased, it seemed like he just snatched it from Zhongli without asking for it. What a fucking dick! <笑> At least she's honest about her passion. Yeah. Excuse you! Your tone. Watch it. <laughs> I hope the Lord of Geo would strike you down. Um. Oh, maybe he's trying to collect strength or something. More nefarious than money. Nandeda. Areva Gyoko no collection de Gungo Kakto Tomoni Ostekitanda. What? Is this his way of trying to be intimidating? Without pulling out the big guns? Okay. Doctor Nanda Tiunda. Kinku Sekamo, Kanemo, Dutchimo Erni Costaco Nice. Once again, insulting her. Jeez. Soda. Oh my god. This guy is so rude. Damn. Uh oh. You guys, I feel it happening again, though. I'm getting charmed by Zhongli once again. We can't. We have to stay strong. We have to stay cautious. Our walls need to stay high, okay? We can be civil, but we have to we have to we have to remember who he is at all times. Because if we forget, I feel like I'm gonna screw myself over and get hurt again. And now I'm scarred and scared <laughs> to uh, open up to him again. Oh boy. Do I wanna fight that thing right now? I don't think so. We're gonna go around. Okay, so this I came across this before and I didn't know what it was. Oh. Wow, okay. Ah, it's like a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of I think he's trying to discourage this guy. Subtly. Oh,okay.ただ遺跡の入り口は封印されているみたいで入れないのよ。関係のありそうな装置は見つけたけど、解除しても封印は微動だにしなくて、その封印の由来も解除方法も。潮の魔人の研究にとって重要な課題になっているわ。うん。物証がないからわからないわ。でも封印の多くは真実を隠すために存在するものよ。けど、潮の魔人は優しく力もあって、みんなに愛されていた。見せられないものなどないはず。だから
封印に関する言い伝えは雑然としているように見えるが Good cover. 実は解除の仕方もちゃんと伝わっているんだ Good cover. 封印と関係がありそうな装置の話をしていたな And redirecting the conversation. He knows what he's doing, folks. <laughs> yep, yep. I wonder if that's how he writes off all his knowledge. That, oh, I just read it in a collection of disorganized, chaotic articles or something like that. He probably has to be careful about how much he reveals because if he's talking to scholars, they'll probably want to know like, the sources, like, they'll want the books so they can read them too and stuff like that. So he probably has to be really careful what he says. Even if it's the truth. Mm. A certain angle. Ah, here we go. Hora, Kaijo de Kitanoni, who you are Bidoda Nishinino. Soreva, more hitos no sochi or doji ni Kaijo Shinai to Ikenai Kara. Oh, more hitos. Ah, Orega and Nice you. Look at these two dudes chilling by the water. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta ruin your day. Coco. Ah, Kawata Genso Sekigatawa. Elemental monuments. Who in Osira Beretamini? Come in a mill motta hito yatotan dakedo. Sekinia Kariot Sketato, Nanimo Corana Catano, eh? Coco no secua Tadashi Jim Bande Akariot Skenaito. Oh. そして、ヒントは魔人戦争に関する文章の中にある。南は天候、東は洋光、西は絶雲、北は計画。広い理由に居場所がないとは。はあ。え、なんだって？The この文書は塩の魔人とも関係がある。この優しい神は苦しむたびに居場所を与えるため、リーウェ各地を歩き回った。Oh wow. You don't know that for sure, but I mean, Zhongli hasn't confirmed or denied, so we're just gonna have to wait. South, east, west, and north. Okay. Got it. South, east, west, and north. I also like the detail that. They've purposefully had her call him Morax this entire time. Like, it's such good characterization, considering how she views him, um, that she's calling him that on purpose. Because we learned when we first came into Liyue, like, that's rude to call him that, and it's disrespectful. But she's calling him that, and I think that's really interesting. And Zhang Li also hasn't corrected her, uh, which is also very interesting. All right, North should be the last one. Meet it. And to compound upon what I said earlier, she's calling him Zhongli Dono, I think, which is a very respectful um, suffix, I'm pretty sure, in Japanese. So she's being like really respectful to him. <laughs> so it's not that she's disrespectful out of ignorance, she's like, purposefully being disrespectful towards uh, Morax or the Lord of Geo, which is really cool. Really cool attention to detail in the writing there. Oh. He's gonna... <laughs> he's like, there's rules. Wow. Very on brand, trying to create order. Even though he's not technically the leader or whatever, he's uh, taking control anyway. Oh, a contract, of course. 
<笑>いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、
Okay, hold on. I I, I want to actually like see what he does. <laughs> um. Okay. Now I know why everyone yeah, calls him Geo Daddy. <laughs> I know now. So, his shield has not only damage absorption, but he lowers the resistance of enemies too. <laughs> uh. Oh. Right. Okay, yep, that works. Thank you for glitching that up there. I appreciate that. Thanks. He's so assertive. <laughs> okay. Oh, perfect. That worked out. We're not missing anything? Okay. Is this one of the artifacts? Oh, wow. <sighs> Look at his face. He doesn't like this guy. Look at that side eye. It's a mean side eye. Oh, that's kind of sad. Like, that's not the その通りだ。無限の塩を生み出すなんてやっぱり塩の魔人の力はすごいわ。ここまで苦労してやっと見つけたお宝だ。こいつは俺のだ。無限に出てくる塩。それを売るだけで十分に儲かるはずだ。
How is Shangli gonna react to this? Oh, really? Excuse the fuck out of you. This guy's asking for it. Damn. Ooh, the wrath of the rock? <laughs> Is that his ultimate? <laughs> that does not mean shit. You're in leeway, babe. Oh shit. Is he gonna just murder him? What is he gonna do? Oh, we all we do fight him! Oh shit! Zhongli! Lethal force! Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> Oh my god! Look at him hiding behind the table. Come back here. Wow. We'll take you and your loud ass yelling voice out of here. And never return. <laughs> um. Yeah. Oh, really? You couldn't smell Zhang Li when he was lying to us. Hmm. True. Oh, really? Shall we? この考古学チームに考古学を目的に来た者はいない。どうしてそう言えるの? シオの魔人に関する知識だけはかなり詳しい。考古学や文化財よりも、シオの魔人自身に興味があるのだろう。また、お前が話したシオの魔人の伝説も、その多くは銀元町に伝わっている。そう。私は考古学者ではなく、リーエイチ。うん。確かに。モラクスっていう名前を口にするリーエイジンは目が。いや、I yeah, モラクスが私たちの神を殺した。塩の魔人の力を奪うために。憎いわ。でもリーウェはモラクスのリーウェ。歴史だって改ざんされてるに決まってる。だから証明したいの。モラクスが悪で残酷な一面もあるってこと。This might be the truth, not that he murdered the goddess of salt. I don't think he did that, but the cruelty in his heart and blood on his hands thing could very well be true. Wow, he even called himself Morax. And he did see to the fact that Li Wei was no longer his. I still don't know how to feel about that fully. Oh, see a chest back there. Zhang Li is such an enigma to me. Genuinely. I don't know how to feel. Oh God, that's grotesque. 
I'm just trying to weigh what I know of him. You know what I mean? From the knowledge that I've collected so far, which is very little, honestly. And that's what I think is stumping me. And what doesn't help is that he's so hard to read. He never really talks about himself. It's always about, you know, experiences that he has witnessed or things he has witnessed. It's never about him personally. And I think that's what's making me so nervous. Um, because I want to trust him. I want to believe that he's doing his the right thing or his best. But when you have someone lie to you, you know, it's hard to tell when they're being honest um, or what their intentions are, even if they declare them, even if they show them, it's still difficult to believe that. So I think that's what I'm coming at. That's the wall I'm hitting <laughs> is that he's hard to read. He probably likes it that way. And I know for a fact that he's not telling the whole truth. Even if his intentions are good, it's still hard to reconcile that with the mistrust that I feel. But I don't know. I don't think he murdered Havria, this goddess of salt. I don't think that's the case. If he has, that I'll be genuinely horrified, but I don't think he did. I think there's something else. But it's just crazy to have a character who's so committed to the truth, at least in the context of a contract, and is very upfront about that, and yet also lie because of a contract or omit the truth for the same reason that he is truthful. Does that make sense? Ooh, looks like a shattered blade of some kind. あ、壊れた剣よ。これが証拠よ。塩の魔人は抵抗した。ただモラクスには勝てなかったんだわ。塩入れや定規に比べて、この剣の力はもっと強大でしょうね。もし直すことができれば、塩の魔人の力をみん
残念だが潮の魔人ヘウリアは強い魔人ではないむしろ弱い譲歩ばかりしてきた彼女は七神の座には登れない敗者だなんですって魔人戦争時代魔人たちはテイバット大陸を奪い合い力と知恵を尽くし戦ったしかしヘウリアは逃げることを選んだ逃げれば戦火の影響は自分と民たちに波及しないと思ったしかし長い戦争の中で譲歩は終わらないそうしてヘウリアは土地を全て失い最後の居場所しか残らなくなったいやそんなのありえない最後彼女は民を守る武器すら持っていなかった武器すらないでもこの剣はああそれは潮の魔人の遺物ではなく彼女を殺した狂気だ、oh、my God. 狂気違う嘘よ私の信仰を惑わすつもりなのね事実を述べたまでだそんなバカなさてはあなたもモラクスの信者なのね騙されないわおい勝手に行くなよバツだからなそうでなければ俺だって話したくない先へ進もうそこにはおそらく彼女が真相を受け入れざるを得ないものがある I'm honestly speechless、uh, I was really scared that he was gonna hurt her like physically harm her I don't, I, I wouldn't have never been able to forgive him for raising a hand against an unarmed person like that. But the truth about Havria that she was weak in terms of her divine powers, I guess, and that she gave up her pride to try and protect her people. Shioto, Uragirida. Oh god, that just gave me chills and not the good kind. <gasps> He seems to have been fleeing from something, no doubt suspecting that something terrible was afoot. Oh my god. Oh my god. I don't want to go in. Ima Made no Arewa Nanano Carero and Nani Omite Nani Ostano Soste Itai Nani Gatano Oreo Shinji Rarena in Rara Saki Susumushkanai. あの時の出来事この扉の先にある痕跡がそれを記録しているおおまいガー
Oh my god. <gasps> he once held something in his hand, upraised in a pose of supreme effort. This must be the one who... Oh, please no. God. Oh, he's reaching for her. Oh, God. This is horrible. I don't even want to hear what Zhongli has to say. I don't. Ground Zero. No matter what was once here, not remains but a single flower of salt. ここだ。ヘウリアだったものが崩れ、使用しか残っていない。これが彼女の最後だ。物語の続きだ。彼女の民はこの優しい魔人では誰も守れないと気づいた。Rowley called her gentle and kind. Look at Shangli's face. マジン戦争は残酷だ。破れた苦痛を味わわせるよりも彼らは彼女を自由にしたかった。どんな弱い魔人であろうとそれが死ぬ時に流れ出る力は凡人の体では耐えられるものではないおまいガード逃げられなかったものがこんな風になってしまったんだ生き残った民は領地を離れ願望帝君の庇護を求めるためリーユエ
I'm covered in snot. What are you doing? I wonder how close he was with her. Because even when she was like alive, like Saltera is like right on Liwei's doorstep. So if the Archons were fighting fiercely over things, she must have gotten, was on friendly terms with Morax. You know what I mean? I wish I could take a picture. Because he wouldn't have, I'm assuming he wouldn't have let her be so close to his territory if they weren't friendly. Well, that made me cry. <laughs> that was really sad. It was nice though to get um, more context on Zhongli's insights. So I feel like one of the main reasons why it's so hard for me to, to choose to trust him again is that I just don't know his motives. Like I don't know what he's thinking or what his true feelings are about things. But seeing the way that he spoke about the goddess of salt, you know, I don't know, it was very eye-opening and it, I feel like lent a lot of context onto how he sees things. You know, her death, or I should say her murder, was a warning, he said, and I can see how that was a huge motivator for him to maybe separate himself from Li Wei, you know, and hand it over more so to the humans. Um, so when or if Li Wade's strength fails, you know, it's it's not due to him, his people having an over-reliance on him. You know what I mean? Which means that he actually really does care about his people and that his deal with Senora was not done out of some baseless ruthlessness. It, I still think, you know, the way he had to test Li Wei in order to get them to really not need him was still very ruthless, but you know, I can see how that was necessary. Even if it was hard to witness and for Lumine to be a part of since she really bared a lot of the burden of protecting Li Wei from the, uh, the, the threat. Mayani mo itta ga, kouun kak no shita ni wa, majin tachi ga ouk fuuyin sare te iru. You did. Ima no Li Yue a bonjin tachi no mono da. Tou i mukashi ni ikita heuria no okimiyage o, Li Yue kou ni mochi kaeru wake ni wa ikanai. I agree. Koko de shizuka ni nemurase ta hou ga ii. What would you like to do? Ore wa hitotsu no jidai wo owarase ta. Sono rekishi wo dou kiroku sereba ii ka. Oh, interesting. Zutto kangae te ita. Very interesting. Rekishi wa kiroku dekiru ga. Sono shinkyou se wa futashika na mono da. Konkai no ken wa sono shoumei ni natta. Very true. Okay. しかし変わらない盤石も世界も俺もいつか消えるかもしれないうん勝利だからお前のことを思い浮かべたんだ he? 
別の世界にも伝わるだろう。Oh, wow. 旅人としてお前が記録すればテイワットの時代も歴史もバックアップを得たのと同じだ。任を重くして道通しか。さてとそろそろ置き土産を海に入れるとするか。Wow, I was not expecting him to say that. He's like the only character who openly acknowledges that we're from a different world. オレたちは戦った。マジンが封印された。幸運閣も。千年の時を経て、逸話と伝説しか残っていない。オセル。俺たちは適当したが。旧時代の対立は所詮旧時代の思い出に過ぎない。ヘウリアの遺物はお前が飲み込むといい。リーウェコの霊石はこれで一つなくなった。天地万象、後世に任せるとしよう。Holy shit. Okay. That definitely definitely did a lot of Kaya, I'm trying to talk. Thanks, babes. Um that really changed my mind on like a lot of things. Obviously, I I I think I'll still be treating Zhongli with a great deal of caution, but there seems to be a very solemn sincerity to how he treats, or I should say how he handles things like this. And again, the fact that he's like one of the only characters in the entire cast that first of all knows that we're from a different world and possibly knows more about that than he's letting on. Quite possible, All, almost guaranteed. <laughs>、um, but the the way that he acknowledges that is just so it's so refreshing to be spoken to so upfront like that.、Um, since we we have so little answers, and to have again like a character recognize that about us, and that we are from somewhere else, and also. I mean, he's not using us in a, like, a bad way, but he's saying, you will come and go. You will go on at some point. And I want the truth to go with you so it remains immortal that way, in a sense.、Um, and I think that's, that's, you know, that's very interesting. And it just adds more context to、uh, the traveler's relationship with Zhongli.、Um, As for Havria, Havaria,、um, that was really sad. <laughs> I, I really can't even begin to express how genuinely tragic that is. And that there, it's tragic because there's so much, there, it's so real. Because that, that happens in real life that, that people who, people of peace and who have very kind and gentle demeanors. Are the ones who suffer the most in times of war. You know what I mean? And when Zhang Li was saying she was weak, I don't think he meant it as a slight. I think he meant it as just a baseline descriptor of it was ruthless back then, and the gods used all their strengths and all their wiles and all their wit in order to fight for territory or maintain control over pieces of Tevat, fighting for the seats of the seven. Um, and it was, it was rough, and it there was war everywhere. 
Um, and if you weren't like Havria or Havaria, I don't know how to say it correctly. If you weren't inclined to fight, your options were essentially die. <laughs> I mean, she tried her best to protect her people by just surrendering to everybody. Um, but he said it, you know, it ate away at her to the point where she didn't even have a sword to defend her people in the end. Um, and I, I just think that's so sad. It's so sad. And I mean, I don't know why, like, you know, maybe she didn't want to accept help from Morax or if he offered it. I don't know, like, if there's more details to that story. But it seemed like he was handling her um, memory with a lot of care, even though he was very blunt about how he delivered the truth. I think it was I think he 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 didn't mean to, like, be an asshole about it. I think he was just trying to honor her memory by being as honest as possible. Um, and in the only way he knows how to be honest is <laughs> being brutally honest. Um, and even even though he did recognize that it was almost like a punishment to um, the woman uh, because it so it was so opposite of what she believed. And I I did for a moment think like is he is he gonna attack her? Is he gonna hit her? <laughs> Um, I didn't, I didn't think he would, but a part of me thought he might, which is why I'm cautious. Wow, we can talk um, to him. <laughs> oh, he seems very sure about that. もう少しここにいようとも。魔人戦争の時代、善悪を判断する基準は今とは違う。もちろん今の俺は彼女には優しい時代に生まれて欲しかったと思っている。オッケー。もう少しここにいようとも。昔なら具体的な答えを出せたが、今はまあ王城堂の格系としての責務を果たそうと思う。Okay. that's going to be the <laughs> second act that we'll get to in a second, but his his statement about you know we didn't measure right from wrong in the same way we do now is a very peculiar sentence and i wonder uh if there's any skeletons in zhongli's closet <laughs> i mean i'm assuming there is he was dis i mean he fought for one of the seats of the seven which means that he had to defeat a very very many gods, possibly, maybe humans, I don't know. All right. Okay. 鉱山で働く仲間を見つけ出してほしいとのことです。人探しか?よし、おいらたちの得意分野だな。はい、旅人さんの実力なら問題ありません。オッケー、No mere stone, okay. Well, that's not how I expected this to start, I'll be honest. <laughs> have to go look for workers? Interesting. Okay. Indeed. Okay. Sotonayaritadatiunasugunivakarsa. 
この業界にいると鑑定の仕事も多く任される<笑>石も人間もこの隊にかかれば、okay. 人2人とも少し待っててくれもう一人の助っ人がそろそろ来るはずなんだちょっと待てよ仕事はオイラたちに頼むんだろ他の助っ人と報酬を読まなきゃいけないよな、はあ、正直なところ今回の一件はかなり厄介なんだ冒険者だけじゃまだ心もとなくてな。おい、おい、他の人にも。Why is she so upset about this? This is like not. おじさん、おいらたちの腕を舐めてもらっちゃ困るぞ。<笑>お前たちはまだ詳しい事情を知らないだろう。今回の一件は鉱山で起きたことでな。しかも、ただごとじゃない。それに鉱山に事故はつきものだ。A、mining expert? この業界の専門家にも依頼したんだ。鉱石鑑定や地質分析とかは、冒険者には荷が重いだろう。専門家を連れて行くのも、いざという時のためさ。それに、俺が見つけた人は、クロート中のクロート。どんな石だろうと、その人なら一目見ただけでお見通しなんだ。俺の見立てでは、あの人は世界で一番鉱石に詳しい。そんな専門家を知ってたら、依頼しない手はないだろう。Okay. ちょっと待って世界で一番鉱石に詳しい人はその人じゃないと思うわ。Well, so... どうしてだだって一番詳しい人はオイラたちの友達にいるからな。Well, Paimon calls him the,、uh, our friend. Interesting. <laughs> 上には上がいるってのを教えてやるぜ。Wow, we're very loyal to Zhongli, aren't we? This guy said, Yeah, I found an expert. And <laughs> Paimon immediately butts in, is like, Uh uh uh. No, you didn't. <laughs> we know one. We know the one, singular. The only one. Let's go get him. <laughs> well, apparently, uh, l u m i n and Paimon are comfortable enough going to fetch him. Wait, where the hell am I going? There he is. All right. Zenkai no Tsuzuki. Gango taken wa. お前たちも講談を聞きに来たのかなかなか粋な心がけだ<笑>いやオイラたちは勝利を探しに来たんだ今空いてるか時間ならあるが<笑> That's loaded, isn't it? <笑>、um... 地質と鉱石に詳しい人が必要なんだ地質と鉱石 Don't. この大陸中を探し回っても勝利より詳しい人なんていないはずだろその依頼人が世界一鉱石に詳しい専門家を見つけたらしいんだけどテイワットで一番詳しいのは勝利だってことをオイラが証明してやる<笑>なぜそうも他人と比べたがる<笑> yeah. Very personally. そういうことなら一緒に行っても構わない。Oh. 本当か He's gonna come with us? 先に断っておくが、俺は多少知識があるとはいえ、世界一と言えるほどこの道を極めているわけではない。What? 知識の海には果てがない。見聞を広めることはいいことだ。俺がいれば、俺たちも安心できるのだろう。それに、もし本物の専門家に会えるのであれば、俺も切磋琢磨するのに。I want to distrust him so bad, but him being humble and like familiar with us is not helping. <laughs> so hard to keep my guard up around him. 
Alrighty. Let's go show off our <laughs> our Archon on a leash, I guess. The way Paimon's been treating him, jeez. We did ask politely though, right? He said that he had time. Wow, very possessive. Our guy? Really, Paimon? Paimon。<laughs> ここでいいんだってか。お、来たか。紹介しよう。俺が見つけたスケット、君主だ。君主。こっちは冒険者協会から来た冒険者で、えっと、こちらの先生は。What? What was that exchange? What the heck? What was that? What is this? Why does he look sad? 王城堂の閣計。勝利先生。その名前、俺も耳にしたことがあるぞ。聞くところによると知識が豊富で才能溢れる方だとか。まさかこんなところで本人に会えるとは。ん？その顔どこかで、もしかして王城堂で会ったことが、いや、でも僕
この石の中に隠されている水晶は形をなす際に水を含んだようです水が夜の山々の満月のようにそこに隠され空を映しながら流れ動く、wow. 非常に What a description. こんなに詳しくまるで直接見てきたみたいな言い方だなオイラたちをからかってるんじゃないよな。さ、okay.て、まだその石の中身を見てないよ。<笑>いや、彼が言ったことは事実だ。水晶はそのほとんどが高温環境で生成される。高温と水は相性が悪い。そのため、水入り水晶は貴重な品だ。そして、この水晶が含んでいるのは、のそのため、鉱山の湖の水。さ勝利先生のような目を持つ方に会うのは初めてです。僕よりも詳しい。石の中の様子をどうやって知ったんですか。見識を深めていけば、自然とわかるようになる。大したことではない。君主殿もあまり気にしないでくれ。<笑>いえ、そんなことないですよ。これも何かの縁です。ぜひ僕とお友達になってください。タイ、勝利先生を一緒に連れて行くべきです。僕を信じてください。彼はすごい目利きの持ち主です。わかった。人が多ければそれだけ力になる。全員俺と一緒に双眼鏡炎の鉱山まで来てくれ。Oh, I guess you should have seen that coming with the mining thing. Oh boy, this should be interesting. Yeah, the chasm is massive. 6日前俺と何人かの仲間で外の用事を片付けにここを離れたんだそしてその用事を済ませて帰ってくるとる仲間と一緒に鉱山のあちこちを探したんだが見つからなかったつまり甲府、うん、が4人行方不明ということかそうだもともと俺らは10人いたんだ行方不明になったのはアリュー銀代銀次ショウモみんな俺と一緒に仕事をする甲府だこの種の仕事に携わる人間は体つきのいい青年が多い、うん、その4人の甲府だが他の鉱山で鉱石を掘っている可能性はないと思うここ一帯に宿はないそれにここに来た時他に採掘中の鉱山は見当たらなかった、うん、こんなに大きな鉱山を全て探したんですかああまんべんなくな井戸の底も探した残すは地面の下くらいだでも4人の人間が穴を掘って地底にいるとは考えにくいだろう現場を詳しく調べてから結論を出そうああ分かった俺はここで待ってるから好きなだけ調査してくれもし何か手がかりを見つけたら俺に教えてくれよ人間が突然消えるなんてさすがにおかしいぞそれにここから離れた場所に行った可能性だってあるよなとりあえずこの辺りで手がかりを探してみよう OK Let's see what we've got おいあれ見ろ上着とズボンが散らかってるこの鉱山にある生活用品はタイドのたちのものだろう。うん。あ、間違いない。上着とズボン、それぞれ十着ある。これって着替え用の服だよな。ほら、タイが着てるのと同じだし。うん。ということは、行方不明の四人は、六日も服を変えてないってことか。Oh boy. They left all their stuff. So they definitely weren't planning on leaving. That's for sure. Like, they didn't plan to go on a trip. Uh, no, Lamine. <laughs> つまりそれだけは持っていったのだろうそれらの道具を持っていく余裕はあったのに
生活用品を持っていく余裕がなかったとは考えにくい。It wasn't planned. ああ、一体どんな状況になったら生活用品を持たずに道具だけを持って出かけるんだ。一つ、彼らは近くで作業をしていたため荷物を持つ必要がなかった。しかし、未だに誰も帰ってこないところを見ると、この説はおのずと違うことになる。Okay. And then the second one. Yeah. <laughs> more likely. Oh, right. Aye, aye. Oh, right. 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 ああ、ちょうど良かったです。何が発見したのか。ここに鉱石があったのですが、もしかすると何か手がかりが見つかるかもしれません。鉱石？その鉱石が行方不明と関係があるのか？それは確かめてみれば分かります。少し待っててください。
俺と他の4人の仲間は鉱山に残って作業をしていた一番奥のテントで俺は寝てたそして目が覚めると跡形もなくみんな消えてたんだ少し前まで普通に話をしてた奴らが突然消えちまってまさかまさか今度は俺の番なんじゃ Yeah, I wonder why they were chosen. Why did they choose the Shinsou? 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 に報告しに行こう。帰ってきたか。調査の結果はどうだった。近くで手がかりを見つけた。そう、ファー。一つ。鶴橋が四本なくなっていたが、生活用品は一つも減っていなかった。つまり、皆自発的に出て行ったのでは
今もずっと焦燥感に駆られてますでもそれがどうしても思い出せなくて心がモヤモヤして、wow. Anxiety is not a good feeling. はい。一体どこへ行けばいいのかもわからず、僕はブラブラと歩いていました。そしてある日、市場で買い物をしていたところ、新流石のことを話す声が聞こえてきたんです。その言葉はすごく聞き慣れたもののように感じました。僕がや
青い髪で背が小さかったわね多分女の子だったわそれにその子すごく真剣な表情をしていた彼らが歩いたのはこの道かそうよここから先へ向かったわうんおいらたちも This is getting more and more bizarre Okay, Fatui, that's been following me for five minutes straight with this boss music playing for five minutes straight. Cool it. I'm not fighting you right now. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Saying he was persistent. Okay. Oh, gosh. The roly polies. I hate these things. <sighs> okay. ほどの魔物たちですが、気象が荒く旅行を通っただけで遅いかかってきたんです。助けてくれてありがとうございました。私は遠慮区リーウェ聖路町に所属していて、軍隊さんの研究をしてます。ああ。コウフじゃなかった
か言ってるぞああボーイこれほどの執着異常だ近くに休める場所があるそこにこの人を連れて行ってから今後の策を練ろう Oh, we're gonna have a private combo? Alright, let's hear it. How are you? I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. Well, didn't they walk for like five days straight? Like anyone would collapse from that. There's a possibility. What? There's something in this person's eyes. ハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘンハヘ
やはり造物であるため結晶の数は少なく知名度も低いそれに数百年前にはすでにもう採掘し尽くされている現代のリー・ウェジンがなぜ今はもう存在しない鉱石を探すうーん確かにそれにこの石の存在を知ってるならもう掘り尽くされてることも知ってるはずだなおかしいぞ矛盾してる鉱石を商売にする者の中にも珍流石に興味を持つ人はいるしかしクンジュ殿のように動機がはっきりしないまま石を探すのはいささか妙だうん、hmm. maybe he's not being fully honest you know what I mean he's not telling us everything he's just I don't know he doesn't seem like he's evil though だが様子は見た方がいいだろう。Okay. As long as we're in this together. 今一番重要なのは、コーフたちを救い出すこと。それ以外のことは、遅かれ早かれ明らかになる。相手との距離は縮まってきている。このまま進めば、残りのコーフも見つかるだろう。休憩が終わったら、クンジュ殿に声をかけて、調査の続きと行こう。先ほどのコーフは、あのまま休ませておくのがいい。事件が解決した後に戻ってこようそれと態度のに書き置きを残す、okay. そうすれば彼が来た時にすぐ対処できるはずだ Already As long as <laughs> Zhongli and I are on the same page I don't mind He looks exhausted Okay Archaic stone Okay I think that's what、um, Kunju gave us Interesting はい、僕もちょうど終わりました何か収穫はここ一帯の石が綺麗だということ以外特別なところはありませんでした触れても何も見えず手がかりも、okay. やっぱり鉱石の記憶は時と環境によって変化するみたいです、hmm. えっと具体的にはわかりませんただ、oh, 鉱石に残ってるのは passed. Oh, so not long term. Oh, so not long term. Oh, so not long term. Oh, so Well, we've got our eye on you, dude. He could be leading us into a trap, but I seriously doubt it.、But、we can never know for sure. Whoa. Holy shit, look at the blue. Whoa, that looks so cool. I haven't actually ever really been in here and looked at this. My gosh. Is that Dragonfall, maybe? Oh. Sus. Sus. Uh, be careful. I know you can probably take care of yourself, but. Mom friend instinct is kicking in. <laughs> I would have rather have said it, at least, than not said it. Oh, Lumine. Miss? Ma'am. Oh my god, hi, Mom. <laughs> Oh! What the fuck just happened? What? Oh, no, 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 sir. That's a lie. In the tree? Oh, 
But you can fly. Why would I climb? So, so this guy? I can count quite a few. Oh, good. I'm glad you arrived at that <laughs> realization. Oh, yes, sir. Coming. <laughs> Life endures in heaven and earth thanks to merciful Adeptus. On this site lies an evil dragon. Please do not disturb it. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please do not disturb the evil dragon under the rock and evil big tree. I got it. Okay, shit. All right, let's not keep Zhongli waiting. He didn't sound very patient when he called for us just now. And I do not want to piss that man off. Uh -oh. oh gosh, the miners are gonna, what, wake an evil dragon or something? I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> Compose yourselves. <laughs> Paimon needs to be told to compose herself more often. To be honest. Oh boy, I don't know what I'm going to find down here. A little worried, not going to lie. Oh. Oh, cutscene? これは。あ、行方不明の動物たちだ。何を掘ってるんだ。はあ。ハイマン。もしやこのトンネル彼らが掘ってできたのかもしれない。あ、あのもん。元から誰かが止めなければ彼らはあのまま掘り続け封印の門を開けるだろうはいままさか封印の中に何かうおう<笑> uh no, no 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 they're probably innocent we can't hurt them i don't want to fight them i'm on oh whoa whoa Oh shit! It's his shield! <laughs> oh my god! Oh! No! Oh, the creepy motherfucker! Oh my god, he took that for Zhongli! Uh oh. <gasps> what the hell? Whoa! His shield was so strong, but that little girl, I was waiting for her. I was like, the, the miners are here. I don't see the little girl. Where the hell is the little girl? Oh my gosh, what is this about to be? What is this about to be? <gasps> no. Wait, wait. Oh my god, okay. We have Zhongli with us. Sealing me away. Um. Not how we intended for events to transpire. I'm sorry, I'm running around until I can read all the lyrics. The Your life is mine, not lyrics. The, <laughs> the script. Their words. Okay. Oh my god, this music! Oh my god, what the hell? Boss fight! Ah! <laughs> Thank God for Zhongli's, um, shield. Oh my God. Oh shit. Oh wait, did 
Does his shield not hold against? Oh, fuck. Oops. <laughs> okay. Right, I have to hold for his shield. Ah! Okay. Okay, no, we're fine. His shield holds. We gotta trust in Geo Daddy. Okay, we gotta get. He's gonna get us through this. <laughs> ah! oh, I'm so used to not dodging. Okay. I'm not used to not dodging, I mean. Okay. Oh my god, he's. His health bar is so thick! This is an actual boss! Like a boss boss! Oh! Shit! Okay. Ah! <laughs> okay, this is gonna take us a hot minute. <laughs> Oh god, he's a big boss! It's a big old boy! Ah! <laughs> okay. <gasps> oh! Okay. Oh. Let's, let's 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 get the shield back out. Oh! Oh gosh! We're slowly whittling away at his health! <laughs> okay. This music, dude! Oh! Ah! This music is literally insane. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, whoa! What is this? Oh, gosh! Okay. We're not letting this shield drop. <laughs> I'm way I'd be way too scared to do this fight without his shield. Ooh. Oh, that barely did any damage. Okay. Oh, please. I missed that entire Okay. It's fine. It's fine. Ah! Okay. Shield is up. Oh! Where is he going? He went under the ground! No! Rude! Okay. Okay, big stomps. There was a boss like this in Elden Ring that stomped like this, and you couldn't dodge these stomp waves either. But luckily in this game, we have Zhongli. <laughs> we didn't have Zhongli in Elden Ring. <laughs> Okay. Ah! Okay. Get the shield back up. Okay, I need to keep an eye on that. I'm just not used to it. This one's not enough. You would forsake me again. Oh! Listen to that music! If that is what you choose to believe, weight of memory, destined to shoulder. Oh my gosh. They're really having a whole... So they know each other. Oh. Gosh. Not dodging these these big hits <laughs> is giving me anxiety. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ah. Ah, shit. Shit, shit, shit. Okay. Oh. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. Ah! Okay. <gasps> oh, gosh. <laughs> oh. Big stomp. Oh. Let's get the shield back up. <laughs> this music is so epic. What the hell? Ah! Oh shit. Ooh! <laughs> Ooh. 
<laughs> the tone of this fight would be a lot different, folks, if I didn't have Zhongli. <laughs> the panic would be real. The frantic flipping to the food menu <laughs> would be almost every other second. I'd flat out die. I would have died already. Absolutely would have died already. <laughs> Oh! He's charging! <laughs> right up the butt. Dang. Could you imagine? <laughs> Kaya's frost cone right up your ass? I couldn't. You think you can destroy me? Well, we're trying. <laughs> oh, Zhongli sounded... Did he sound winded? He sounded troubled, at least. Ooh. All right, there he is. Refresh the shield. There we go. Okay. Ah! <laughs> Rock up the butt. How'd you like them apples, huh? You big rock baby. Yeah, I'm talking shit from behind Zhongli's shield, but so what? <laughs> so what? <laughs> okay. Oh no. I just wasted their ult. Crap. Ah! <laughs> Alright, he's not so scary. Ooh. Get your gullet out of my face. Ow! Sorry, Zhongli. Sorry, babes. <laughs> Let's get that shield back up. We're doing okay. Ah! We're doing okay. We got this. We got this. We got this. He's so close. Come on! He's almost down! No! <laughs> no! Okay, no. I'm nervous. Let's give Geo Daddy some pizza. You got this. You're keeping us all alive, dude. <laughs> we can't have you go down. Ooh, the music is, uh. It's gotta be Zhongli. Oh. Oh. We did it! First time! The only reason why we got that the first time is because we had Zhongli with us. Oh, what the fuck? Oh. Oh, he knows this. Asta? <laughs> oh lord. I've just noticed that those are Zhongli's pillars. What? <gasps> oh, wait. Hisashina <laughs> Whoa, wait a second. <laughs> 
wait. Is this like a... お前は力をすべて俺たちに使った。仕方のないこと。これが我の持つすべてだ。Is he possessed too or something? 真相を告げなかったのは悪かった。旅人よ。我もこの木の下に来てからはっきりと理解したのだ。へえ。正確には我は完全な弱打流王ではなく。そのつの欠片に過ぎない。天地、陰陽、領域、我とそこの竜王をそのような存在だと思ってくれていい。我らは皆、あすけさまの竜王の意志なのだ。マグネス。マグネス。No、did you just さまが我の一部だと言うなら、なぜ裏切り者の側に立つ。我は封印が緩んだ時に覚醒したもう一つの力。個体になることの力は持たず、こうして人間に憑依するしかない。我の意識は混沌であった。自分が誰なのかもわ
Wait. ジャクダリュウオとモラクスの断る。我は弱大流を元素結晶により生まれし者第一の力と記憶を背負い Oh. Oh shit. <笑> むしけらも同然。貴様は忘れたのだ。モラクスを最も認めているのは貴様であり、我でもある。貴様が第一の記憶だというのなら、我は人間と共存する記憶だ。天道晩書三回家業。コーチ先生三人別よ。おかしい。なんだこの感覚は。これは。<笑> oh. さまは特に枯れ果てた。我より先に消滅する。しかしその前に、これを貴様に授けよう。春になれば荒野に雪が降り、一瞬で溶けゆく。それが束の間で、貴様の心に痕跡を残せなくとも、たとえそれが最後であ
お前が引き起こしたことへのけじめをつけたい<笑>それもそうだよかろうわお I'm sorry I was silent through all that but I felt like I was watching a movie Oh my gosh Wow That was so much to process Oh my gosh He gave him eyes I'm, I'm also like really stumped at how gentle Zhongli was with him What? Okay, but I am still like genuinely shook on the the familiarity that was that transpired between them and the fondness that was like and the respect was just insane. It felt like a privilege to watch that interaction. どうちゅう休んでいる賞も見つけたからすぐに処置を施しただが未だ他の三人は見つかってないうんくんじゅうお前大したことではない心配するなその甲府たちならその洞窟の中にいる洞窟の中体力を使い果たしてはいるが命に
かつての双眼巨猿でのことためらいはあったか岩石には心がある俺もまたしかりしかし俺は契約の神かつてのリーウェの神でもある貴様は義を選んだが陣は捨てなかっただから我を殺さなかったのだろう我は自ら望んで封印されたのだ竜は天を震わせ地を動かすお前の力ならたとえ全盛期の俺でも一人で相手にするのは難しかっただろう封印などもってのほかだだから我が生まれたのだどう取り繕ろうが我もリーゆえの誕生を見届けたものどんなに姿が変わろうが自らの方法でちぎりを貫き通す契約の神の友としてこれが契約を全うする我の最後の方法だ<笑>感謝する弱だ我の命は無限に近い永遠の時と共に続くだろうそしてモラクス貴様も非常に長い時を持つ者、はあ、行くのかモラックス縁があればいつの日か必ずまた会おう。心配はいらない眠っているだけだうーんなんか変だぞ突然別人になったような俺たちとクンジュは確かに互いを知らない関係だああもうかなり昔のことだ千年も経ったが昨日のことのように鮮明に覚えているはあ、前回の続きと以降岩王帝君は山々を一人でくぐり抜け地の割れ目から聞いたこともない音を聞きましたリーウェの地下に住む古代の岩元素生物そのほとんどは目が見えず何千年も空を見たことがないその音は歌のように悲しくもあればイカズチのように恐ろしくもありました岩王帝君は辺りを回り岩層から奇妙な石を見つけましたそれが弱田竜王だった。彼の望みに応え俺が地上に連れていた岩王帝君はその石を憐れみ自らそれを本物と見まがう巨竜に掘り上げました俺が彼によう見る両目を与え契約を交わした指を筆のように振るい竜の目の玉をつけましたその瞬間空に雷鳴が轟き本物の竜が現れたではありませんか俺は彼が地上の人々と生きることを認めたしかし彼が秩序を破れば再び暗闇に封印することになるその後竜はいついかなる時も岩王帝君のそばに仕え一緒に戦いましたこのような言葉があります金石が砕かれ誇りを震わし山と川を二つに割いた竜は命と目を与えられ祝福の雨を大地にもたらしたわお、wow. was gorgeous holy shit
千年前ジャクダは双眼巨猿を襲撃した俺がそれを阻止し彼と戦いを繰り広げ最後に彼を撃退し地下に封印した珍流石はその戦いで生まれたものだジャクダは珍流石を本能的に感知することができるだからそれをたどって俺を見つけようとしたのだろうその対戦によって俺は彼を任したが彼が俺より劣っていたということではない彼の心には俺とリーユへそして地上の命への情があったのだ彼は自らの意志で封印されたしかし魔法によってそれすらも忘れてしまったのだ yeah, didn't,、um, 俺も逃れることはできないただ常人より心得があるだけだその時が来れば潔く離れるべきだと、oh、my God. 力が強大であればあるほど魔法がもたらす危険も大きい幾千年も経てば岩ですら疲れ果てるだろう Is this why he decided to step down? 自らの手で友を封印したそれも俺が経験した魔法の一つだ正しい道のために人々は諦め続け失い続けるもしかするとこれが天理が俺にかけた魔法なのかもな There's that term again. What, what is the heavenly しかし俺は人の神だどのように身分が変わろうとこの両目で人の歴史を知見する、wow. やっぱりリーユへのことを気にかけてたんだな大したことではない俺の義務だ今回は助かった感謝するどういたしましてほう<gasps> Nanda. <gasps> oh, I don't. E oh. Oh, God. Oh, God. This is crucial for me. Sorry, oh my, what? None then, the moik tekta, so she so may no come in at all. Takara, to Konokotomo, Kaka Stereona. Oh, please. <gasps> He knows. He knows. <clears throat> Sorry, will you put over the knife? What? この契約はすべてが始まる前に交わした。ルーメン。Better than nothing, we gotta learn eventually. Kono Sekai Nitsi, Wakatikta Yoda Kono Tai Rikuniva, 
まだたくさんのことが秘密があるそれらは長い時を経て人々に忘れられ見捨て去られてきたお前ならそれを見つけ拾い上げることができるかもしれない What? He's doing the thing that ben he did. Well, he's saying something without saying something. Wait, wait. Those who are born to remember will remember. Those who come to witness will witness. Wait. So maybe we have come to witness, and our sibling is the one that remembers. Right? Maybe? Because he just said that we're here to witness things, right? Maybe these are the two twins. And then the remember is the is our brother. Or it could be really wrong, and that makes no sense. But this is my first impression of that. That person. Wow. Wow. Okay. Whoa. Okay. We just got like hit over the head with a. Lisi Jozan Shinku Niot de Taterada. Kibunjeva, Jakudao Akuru to see. Kose no Hito Chikazke Sasenai Tame Chuko was tear. Shikashi Zan and Nagara. Zen to Akua Kami Toe. 善悪が簡単に説明できるものであればよかったのだが Admits the quiet, only the soft sound of the wind can be heard. Time seems to transform into an invisible river trickling away. A fleeting moment, a thousand years in the mortal world, the rocks feel it, and so too does the earth and the gods. Wow. Whoa, we were just hit over the head with like a sledgehammer of lore and、uh, information and emotion. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Okay, but I need pictures first, <laughs> first and foremost. Okay, so we learned that Zhang Li's relationship with Aztaha,、um, I think that's how you say it,、um, is a very old one. And Azaha is some sort of elemental dragon that, or elemental being that he carved out of the earth and gave、um, the ability to be at his side and guide humanity, is what I'm, is what I gathered.、Um, Zhang Li knows about our brother. I think that was it's pretty, pretty comfortable saying that, that he knows.、Um, how much he knows, who, I don't know, but he didn't tell us. And I think this is his character, not flaw, but it's, it's like his strength and also his weakness. That he's beholden to these contracts. And I'm wondering if down the line this will work against him again. At least I think that him not being able to tell us, at least right now, it feels like it's working against us, that he's not able to tell us anything. Maybe at the end of the line, <laughs> when, we, when we get to、uh, all the nations and we. Have experienced so much, maybe this moment、um, and him not saying anything was actually really important. Who knows? But right now, it feels not great. We last left off with ancient Liyue, beset by an ocean demon and a mountain dragon. Rex Lapis mustered his a Deptai to restore peace to the land. They say that before he set out, he spoke these words.
This is an age of gods and monsters. I wish not for dominion. Yet I cannot watch the common folk suffer. I will have order! Cleanse the land and defend our safe harbor. That was the first contract in Leo. And now, the final contract, too, has been set in stone. When it comes to Leo's sacred traditions, the divinity is in the details. <laughs> Even the most fastidious of academics don't claim to know them all. And yet, the mysterious funeral consultant, Zhong Li, seems to know them like the back of his hand. I wonder why. <laughs> the ancient rite of parting is a most unique tradition. Many details have been lost over time, but Zhong Li is still able to perform the rite to perfection. Though he looks young, Zhong Li knows each ancient tradition inside out, but his own past is shrouded in mystery. A mystery I'd like to Every know. Every journey has its final day. Don't rush. Zhongli excels at manipulating Geo, able to create and absorb Geo matter, and provide sturdy shields for his allies. This, paired with his exceptional ability in combat, makes yeah, him that a shield came in clutch party. with that Zhongli dragon. Zhongli seems light. to know everything about everything, even a simple chunk of white iron ore. He is able to pick out the best ore and use it to maximum effectiveness. When forging pole arms. Zhong Li recovers a set percentage of the ores used. Oh, cool. Pretty Zhongli's specific, normal though. attack can combo up to six strikes, dealing physical damage to enemies. Hold the attack button to consume a set amount of stamina and lunge forward, casting down stone spears across Zhong Li's path, Ooh. dealing significant physical damage to enemies. Tap Zhong Li's elemental skill to summon the geo energy from within the ground and form a stone steel dealing area of effect geo damage to enemies oh. while the stone steel remains it will periodically resonate with nearby geo constructs dealing continuous oh. geo damage to surrounding enemies that's cool you can take that's advantage what that pulsing was okay Draw enemies affected by other elements towards the stone steel to both deal geo damage and oh, that's what those reactions. shields were. Use the elemental shield created by Crystallize. The colored to help ones. Your party survive. Stone steels can also be used Wait, to block enemy attacks. I think attacks, that's all geo though. Or Pretty sure Noel to traverse difficult has terrain. given me those before. Holding Zhong Li's elemental skill causes geo energy around him to explode, creating a jade shield. Wow and dealing area of effect geo damage. That's cool. The jade shield absorbs damage. The amount absorbed scales with Zhong Li's max HP. Oh. And is higher against enemies geo attacks. If Zhong Li is surrounded by targets affected by geo, it will drain a large amount of geo energy from up to two of them. This effect does not deal damage. But Ooh, can effectively cool. break down enemies geo armor. Oh, this freaking boss. And nearby ore deposits. I hate that. Oh, that's handy. After unlocking the talent resonant waves, when the jade shield takes damage, it will fortify your character, allowing their shield to absorb more damage. This is order. <laughs> Zhong Li can bring a huge meteor crashing down, dealing massive geo damage and applying petrification to enemies caught near the impact site. Petrified Maybe it's just because we were um after unlocking the talent Dominance of Earth, oh, what? Planet Befall deals additional damage to enemies, which scales you can with Zhongli's them? max HP. Zhongli maintains his Whoa. composure, even as he meets out punishment in battle. His exceptional ability to provide support and deal damage makes him quite prepared for any scenario. It's the, it's the drip the fight for begins, me. <laughs> first, use Zhongli's elemental skill to summon a stone steel and draw enemies near it creating the ideal environment for dealing damage. Next, 
Create a jade shield to absorb incoming damage. Then, alternate normal and charged attacks, stringing together attacks to deal enormous damage. When energy is full, unleash an elemental burst and coordinate your party's attacks to wipe out the enemy. While Liyue Harbor okay. grows restless on the cool. eve of disaster, Ooh. as the host of the Rite of Parting, Zhongli still calmly goes about his work. The world around him may be descending into chaos, yet he remains unperturbed, sipping his tea and watching a good show. Quite the fascinating character. As Liyue faces the turbulence oh, this was of change, the beginning does of the he believe that it is none of his business? Or is he also a player in this game, acting behind the scenes? Oh, he was acting behind the scenes, It may all be right. some time before the answers finally emerge. But no matter, for time is not something I lack. Dang. This is me, fairy lady at Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. No one of importance. This gentleman beside me is our most knowledgeable consultant, Mr. Zhang Li. This Noctilucus Jade is small, but a beautiful shade of translucent blue. It would be a shame not to buy it. Yes, sir. Pasting a windwheel aster to wet glaze before it is fired in the kiln? Fascinating. The flower turns to ash, but its shape is forever retained. Such genius. It would be a pity to not purchase this. Yes, sir. Core Lapis is itself hard to gather. It must have taken true skill indeed to unearth two pieces so alike. We should buy them. Yes, sir. A fine octillicus jade, artisan porcelain, and a pair of Core Lapis, and a windwheel aster as a gift for the fairy lady. Aww. Yes, he even got me a gift. Mr. Zhongli truly is an amazing person. When Shengling is cooking, it would be far more appealing to go to Wanmin restaurant as opposed to Sinue Kiosk or Lioli Pavilion. I'm fine oh. with anything so long as it's good. <laughs> but do they only have chopsticks? Child. You will need to be adept with chopsticks if you are to truly appreciate Liyue's gastronomy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Zhongli, we have Springvale Boar on the menu today. Would you like to try it instead of the salt and pepper tofu? We'll have both. <laughs> In accordance with Snow's Nine customs, we gave Xiang Ling a tip for her amazing new dish. Mr. Zhongli values friendly ties over Mora and is generous in word and deed. Well, the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor often foots the cost of his generosity. <laughs> but thankfully, the Northland Bank is bearing this particular bill. <laughs> Welcome, come in! Excluding this pair of hairpins, everything else is for sale. They're not for sale? Why not? These are heirlooms pawned by a poor fellow to scrounge together money for his wife's medication. I must hang on to them for him until the redemption period expires. Oh. Aww. I paid off the shopkeeper and took this pair of hairpins, seeking to return them to their owner with some living expenses on the side. Aww. Please help me to conceal these expenses in our accounts, would you? I will be sure to buy you lunch. <laughs> Honestly, once you become entangled with Mr. Zhongli, there's no getting away from him at all.
All right, this is an event trailer I already Books reacted to in Child's video. Forth, and those that come across Leo tend to stay a while. So it is where many things come to settle. This is the largest one we've seen so far. <gasps> the Fatui! They're attacking the nation Felissa! <laughs> Let's see. Will the nation that has lost its deity be swallowed up by an ancient malice once more? Farewell, old friend. I am the least adept with the bow, and that is precisely why I must master it. Shouldn't let your guard down. Nothing can be accomplished without rules or standards. Oh, so this must have been we will meet again. the trailer for the quests we did just now. It must have been about four or five days ago. There were a few men who came through here carrying baskets and picks. Yep. I guess that could have been them. And there was a child staggering in front of them. This is I, Aztaha. Is the ha as the ha? Huh. The enraged earth will not absolve you. Ah! <laughs> you stand upon your tomb. <laughs> this was such a cool There's moment. A not gonna lie. <laughs> this is order. It was humanity that attacks the ley lines that sustained me. So here lies the wisdom of the gods. To dust! Hey, wait a minute. Does this count as martial arts? Oh. Ready for trial? Yonfei! A pariah? It's probably going to be an interesting one. Teapot is all yours now. Oh, they introduced the teapot in this update. Very cool. Oh, I love the teapot so much. That. Is that Sing Cho and Zhang Yu? Oh, certain little helper to await you within this teapot. Tell me, she will explain everything you need to know about it. It's like The Sims, but Genshin. <laughs> I love the teapot. Music is so pretty. Mm -hmm. 
Very cool. I bet everyone was excited for that one. Okay. Zhang Li is a playable Geo character, a consultant of the funeral parlor. He is later revealed to be the current vessel of the Geo Archon Morax, who has decided to experience the world from the perspective of a mortal. Okay. His birthday is December 31st. Wow, okay, last day of the year. Uh, funeral parlor's mysterious consultant, handsome, elegant, and surprisingly learned. Though no one knows where Zhang Li is from, he is a master of courtesy and rules. From his seat at the funeral parlor, he performs all manner of rituals. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and look at his character stories. All right, character details. In Li Wei's traditional customs, receiving Adepti and sending Adepti off are equally important. The Hu's of the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor, who have been in this business for 77 generations, are the masters of handling funerals. However, Hu Tao, the current owner of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor, primarily focuses on the art of sending mortals on their way. For the various ceremonies for sending Adepti off, Hu Tao usually employs the help of a friend in more or less the same business. That person's name is Zhang Li. The Adepti have been with Li Wei for a millennia, but only a handful have ascended in the past 3,000 years, which means that everything regarding the traditions now only exists in texts. This is not something one would likely witness twice in their, li in their entire lifetime. Not even the most particular and learned of researchers or scholars could find one fault in Wangsheng Funeral Parlor ceremonies for sending Adepti off. Everything must be perfect, from the costumes, the time, the place, the items, the weather, the scheduled length, the size of the permitted audience, to the stature, profession, and age of said audience. Nothing can be overlooked. When folk describe Zhang Li as living history, the latter usually only smiles and says, I just have a good memory. Well, knowing how his story requests went, <laughs> that has a loaded meaning, doesn't it? Character story one. In Li Wei, if a person pays great attention to details and has insuperable criteria by which they judge certain matters, then they are called particular. In truth, everyone is particular about something. Some people hate spicy food, others don't eat fish, and some want their tofu served sweet. But as for Zhang Li, he is particular about everything. He intends operas performed by only the most celebrated stars, takes only the most luxuriant thrushes out for walks, and he goes into the kitchen personally to instruct the cooks as to the ratio of shrimp and fish required to make the most authentic full moon egg. Zhang Li has expertise in all manners of things, from fashion to daily essentials to fine wines and delicacies to teas and spices and to flora and fauna. He is also more than capable of participating in discussions on commerce, politics, and international relations. But on a typical day, all you will glean from him is a few pieces of useless trivia, because he particularly enjoys sharing these fun tidbits with you. Aww. Character Story 2 When making a purchase, look to haggle. This is a common understanding among the people of Liwei. No matter what high heavens the store owner praises their product to, no matter its ancient history or classical value, prices are always flexible. Half the stated cost is a good place to start. But when Zhang Li pays up, or rather calls for someone else to pay up on his behalf, he never looks at the price tag. As long as it catches his eye, Zhang Li will pay as much as the owner asks. Indeed, he will even buy it at a premium sometimes. But for some reason, Zhang Li always forgets to bring money. <laughs> For small purchases, he has friends to help him out, and large bills he somehow finds ways to have written off. To those merchants who secretly pride themselves on their powers of flattery, Zhang Li is a man of strange proclivities. In truth, he knows a great deal about the value of money and finance, and he also understands the suffering of the people. However, he seems to not understand that poverty is part of the human condition. Or perhaps it might be said that he cannot imagine himself being poor. How has such a person not died of hunger yet? Character Story 3 There is no way Zhang Li can starve. Such concerns as profit and loss are beneath his notice. The Seven Nations and the world itself are where his efforts are directed. As for wealth, he is wealth itself. He is Morax. You know what? Let's just check this out just so we are super thorough, right? Morax, also known as the God of Contracts and Rex Lapis, is the current Geo Archon and a member of the Seven. He had been presiding over Liwei prior to revoking his providence in the last rite of dissension. 
Along with Barbados, he is one of the Seven's two original members who are still alive at the start of the game. He currently wanders the world as Zhongli, a consultant for the funeral parlor. He goes by a plethora of names and titles, including the Prime of the Adepti, the God of Contracts, the God of Commerce, the Warrior God, and the Groundbreaker. Prior to his retirement, Rex Lapis descends in his exuvia form during the annual Rite of Dissension to give guidance to his people for a prosperous year and dictate trade which is the region's focus. Rex Lapis is the god of contracts, commerce, and the warrior god, among many other names. He was the Geo Archon and is the oldest of the seven, and possibly being one of the oldest, if not the oldest, gods at over 6,000 years old. In addition to forming the geography of the region he governs, Rex Lapis defended Liwei in great battles such as the Archon War, which was waged in the area that is now Guli Plains, against other gods. In one battle, he successfully defeated an ancient god known as Osial, using massive stone lances to imprison the sea god, which is now known as the Stone Forest. In another, he sealed the mountain dragon Azdaha under a tree. Okay, you know what? Let's look at Azdaha <laughs> just so we can, um, again, be really super thorough. Astaha is an ancient earth dragon and the overlord of the Geo Vishaps, mentioned in Liwei legends. Though he was once an ally of the Geo Archon Morax, erosion and conflict with humanity led him to be sealed away in the chasm and under the Dragon Queller. Since then, he has sought to break free of his imprisonment, absorb the energy of all ley lines of the world, and destroy everything. All right, description. An enormous dragon as ancient as the mountains themselves. In an age that has all but faded from memory, he stood shoulder to shoulder with one who ruled over a harbor of stone. But in the end, the two came into conflict and the dragon was banished to a dark, deep place underground. Over the long years of his imprisonment, his power has slowly dissipated. He has also become disfigured from the various kinds of erosion he has been subjected to. The faint rattling of this dragon lord's shackles and his deep, angry growl echo through the bowels of the mountains like memories of a bygone era. All right, profile. Azdaha is the oldest of the Geovishaps and holds command over the ley lines. For untold years, he had slumbered in Nantianmen, deep within the earth. But when he awakened, the slightest movement would cause earthquakes, which led to Morax seeking him out to stop it. He was a blind geolife form that had dwelled underground but wished to see the surface life. So Morax unearthed him and granted him the ability to see. As part of his subsequent contract with Morax, Morax warned him that if Azaha ever endangered the Order of Liwei, he would not hesitate to seal him back underground. Azaha became a friend of both Morax and humanity itself, taking a particular liking to blacksmiths. As time passed, Azaha began to suffer from erosion. You know, we've seen this term pop up a couple times. Let's go ahead and click on it just so we can read and be super sure on what exactly this means. Erosion is a general term for the process of getting mentally eroded or worn down by a combination of factors affecting someone's life, including natural memory loss as well as emotional loss or experiencing traumatic events. Eventually, erosion will cause a person to lose their sense of self. Even powerful, long-lived beings like gods and elemental dragons are susceptible to erosion. All right, effects of erosion. Erosion naturally occurs over time and is both caused by and causes the loss of memories. Eventually, it will result in the loss of one's consciousness and sense of self, making them more irritable and suspect to explosive fits of rage. As a result, the more powerful a person is, the more dangerous they become under the effects of erosion. Zhongli, the current form of the former Geo Archon Morax, indirectly confirms the traveler's suspicions the erosion was one of his motivations for stepping down from his position. Currently, the only entity known to have completely succumbed to erosion is Azdaha. He lost his memories of Morax, Liwei Harbor, and his coexistence with humanity despite Morax's attempts to delay Azdaha's erosion. Mining at the chasm damaged the ley lines, which inflicted pain on Azdaha, already irritable from the effects of erosion. Azdaha flew into a rage and lashed out at the miners, forcing Morax and three of the Adepti to seal him away underneath the Dragon Queller. With what little consciousness he had left, Azdaha willingly allowed himself to be sealed away. However, over time, erosion wore away his memories of choice, leading him to believe Morax a tyrant. All right, preventing erosion. 
Warwick shared with us some of his power to prevent further erosion, but it was futile. Everything returns to dust. It is the natural order, an unstoppable force. Aztaha through Kunjin said this about erosion. Two attempts at stalling or circumventing erosion have been mentioned. The first is Zhongli's attempts to halt Azdaha's erosion by sharing his powers with Azdaha, which ultimately failed. According to Azdaha and Zhongli, erosion is part of the natural order and is imposed by the heavenly principles. The second is Ai's creation. Okay, you know what? Just in case there are spoilers, I'm going to skip back from that. Just in case. Just in case. So let's take a step back to Azdaha's page. As time passed, Azdaha began to suffer from erosion. Okay. He forgot Morax's face and contract over time. And when humans began venturing into the chasm to mine, over-exploitation of its resources damaged the ley lines within, causing Azdaha much suffering. Despite Morax's attempt to halt Azdaha's erosion by sharing his powers, Azdaha began attacking the very humans he swore to protect, forcing the Geo Archon to intervene. Given Azdaha's formidable strength as an ancient elemental being, Morax and the Adepti had difficulty subduing the crazed Azdaha. In a battle that began in the chasm and wrought a path of destruction north all the way to Nantianmen. However, with Azdaha's remaining conscience willingly accepting his fate, they were eventually able to seal his eroded self in the Dragon Queller. The clashes of elemental energy during this battle also resulted in the creation of Dragonfall. Azdaha would never forgive Morax for his supposed betrayal and was eventually able to manifest a portion of his power into a vessel called Jiu. Jiu would share her creator's hatred of Morax, but because the vessel took the form of a young child, those she met waved off her anger. Azdaha then decided to break free from his prison by having Jiu manipulate a group of miners. Okay, wait, this was the quest. You don't need to go over this. Um, okay, personality. Little is known about Azdaha's true personality before his will manifested as Jiu and Kunjun. From descriptions, Azdaha was friendly to Morax and had struck a contract with him, pledging that he would never harm Li Wei and assisted him in the Argon War. Okay, let's let's look at this because the last time we looked at this page was when we did Venti's um, character quest. So let's go ahead and read the Li Wei section of this page just so we have a full understanding of the context for the Archon War in Li Wei. During the Archon War, Morax and Guizong, the god of dust, lived with the Adepti and their people in the region known as Guili Plains. When the war began, they stood by each other and fought other gods, but Guizong died and Morax took the people south and established Li Wei Harbor. From there, Morax defended his people from other gods and monsters. Notably, he impaled various gods and sea monsters at Stone Forest with stone lances, among them Osiel and the Chi of Yore. Although they were defeated, the stone pillars became divine, but with hatred and curses within as well. Um, Marchosius, Marcosius, the god of the stove, was one of the gods who sacrificed his power and godly status to prevent the calamities and plagues caused by the war from finally destroying Li Wei. The demons that were generated, however, were hunted down and destroyed by many yakshas tasked by Morax for this purpose. After eons of battle, all but one of the yakshas became corrupted by rage, madness, and shadows of the soul. As of a thousand years ago, Alatus, Zhao, is the only Yaksha still alive and active. Meanwhile, the salt goddess Havaria, Havria, okay, you know what, let's go ahead and read her story. Havria, I think it's Havria, was the god of salt who lived in the region of Liwei before and during the Archon War. She is known for her gentleness, but also for her relative weakness, two qualities that ultimately led to her demise, not at the hands of other gods, but her own people. Her last piece of land and the place where she met her doom is a sealed domain in Saltera, Liwe. Havria was a goddess known as the god of salt who stood shoulder to shoulder with many gods of Liwe. Her extraordinarily gentle nature saw her quickly oust in the hubris of the Archon War before being ruthlessly murdered by one of her own followers. Although not a particularly powerful god, Havria had two artifacts, a salt chalice that magically refilled itself with salt and a ruler that could turn the surrounding area into salt to be harvested. Personality, Havria was gentle by nature and refused to partake in the Archon War, hoping that the peaceful era of the past would return. Unfortunately, she was ill-suited for the harsh realities of that era and was ultimately slain by her own people. This resulted not only in her death, but also the deaths of her own people who were turned to salt as her power surged uncontrollably. History. 
Havria was born some time before the start of the Archon War. When Zhang Li throws her relics into the waters at the Stone Forest, he calls it a homecoming, which suggests she originated from the area. When the Archon War broke out, she refused to partake in it due to her kind nature and relatively weak powers. As a result, she and her people fled between different parts of Liyue to escape the war, making countless concessions to other gods and eventually settling in a tiny plot of land in what is now known as Salterra. It is said that Liyue's flower ball custom may have originated from Havria, giving out bunches of flowers to her people as either a blessing or a simple gesture of comfort. The city stood for several centuries until Sautera's first and last king slew her as a gesture to show that her kindness could not help them survive the Archon War's brutality. In that instant, the city fell and turned to salt. Many rumors and myths about her death emerged from that. Some say that her body can still be found in its death throes, while the king lived to see the end of his days in solitude or committed suicide out of guilt. In reality, Havria's body dissipated and turned into a salt flower, the Sal Flore. But her powers, which spread uncontrollably in the surrounding area, transformed all her adherents who could not escape into salt. The king's body can be found in the same position he was in when he stabbed her. Zhang Li, Morax's current vessel, states that Havria's fate served as a lesson for him during the Argon War. Legacy, those of her people who managed to escape Sal... <laughs> Salinification <laughs> were scattered across Liyue. Many traveled to Liyue Harbor under the control of Morax, and some of those people eventually became the Yinyuan Hall of the Eight Trades, specializing in the salt industry. Descendants of the survivors, fearing that Havria placed a curse on them, returned to Saltera to break the sword used to kill her and place it on a pedestal, along with two of her relics, under the belief that she would forgive them for their sins. They resealed the area after the deed was done. Over thousands of years, Yunyuan Hall's rendition of Havria's death grew distorted. They began to believe she was a powerful goddess who was murdered by Morax out of jealousy. However, other surviving tales about Havria continued to tell her true story. During Zhang Li's quest, the traveler, with the traveler's help in an quote-unquote archaeological expedition, which is actually an attempt to find proof that Morax murdered Havria. At the end, they find a single salt flower, all that is left for her and all her adherents who were salinized, salinized upon her death, including the king who murdered her. Alrighty, let's skip back to the Archon War page. All right, we left off. Meanwhile, the salt goddess Havria, known for both her gentleness and relative weakness compared to the other gods, tried to avoid the chaos of the Archon War and yearned for the peaceful days of old. However, in that brutal era, she found herself making more and more concessions until all she had left for her and her people was the land now known as Saltera. In the end, she perished at the hands of her own people, realizing that her love and kindness was incapable of protecting them. The king of her people decided to slay her both as a demonstration of their decision to take a more militaristic stance and to spare her the agony of defeat and destruction at the hands of another god. On her death, however, the surge of power that emerged from her body salinified, salinified <laughs> all those in the area. Those who survived were scattered throughout Liyue, most eventually settling in Liyue Harbor and forming Yin Yuan Hall. One term I really wanted to look at, or I guess name, is Guizong. I'm curious about this one. Guizong was the Lord of Dust. She is best known as one of the gods who presided over the Guili Assembly, which she established alongside Morax and Marcosius and for her mechanisms such as Guizong Ballista. She perished in a battle during the Archon War, while a massive flood forced the Guli Assembly's inhabitants to move south to Liwei Harbor. Since her death, Guizong's legacy has been preserved in historical texts. Okay, let's look at Guli Assembly and see what this is about. The Guili Assembly was an ancient civilization in the region of Liwei that was established and ruled by the god of dust Guizong and the god of Geo Morax, and supported by other gods such as the god of the stove, Marcosis and by the Adepti. At its height, it was a prosperous and flourishing civilization that possessed highly advanced engineering skills. During a particular battle of the Archon War, Guizong was slain. The Gili Assembly was destroyed and its people were scattered. Morax eventually regathered his people and established Liwei Harbor 3,700 years ago, which has remained standing to this day. Wow, I didn't know um, he ruled alongside Guizong. Wait, so she must be really important then, huh? Etymology. The name Guili is 
I don't know if I'm saying that right, by the way, is derived from the first character in Guizong's name and the second character in Morax's name at the time. The name he went by is unknown, but he currently goes by the name Zhongli, which contains the same character. What? So, <laughs> so you're telling me that the assembly is named after their like ship name? Stop it. Shut the fuck up. That's really? <laughs> That's a thing? Oh my gosh. Okay, history. Uh, little is known about the Guili assembly before the Archon War, but it seems to have its origins with the foundation of Liwei itself. When Morax first descended, much of Western Liwei was submerged underwater and its people were at the mercy of sea monsters such as Bacho. Bacho, I think that's how you say it. He lowered the tides, raised Mount Tianheng, and subdued the sea monsters. After peace settled upon the land, people began mining from the mountains he raised and used the stones they mined to create settlements. At some point in time, Morax became allies with fellow gods, Guizong and Marcosius. Marcosius. Guizong and the Adepti, cloud retainer among them, built the Guizong Ballista on Mount Tianheng. For reasons unknown, Guizong and her people then moved north of the mountain and joined Morax's settlement. Oh, so they had separate settlements and then she went to him. Her people took up agriculture and farming as their livelihood and farming towns appeared all throughout the area. Archon War. 3,700 years ago, the Guili Assembly was destroyed as another casualty of the Archon War. During the conflict, Guizong was slain. Oh, okay. Following the battle came a great flood that devastated the area, forcing its inhabitants to move south of Mount Tianhang, where Liwei Harbor was established. Oh, wow. So once she was killed, her people essentially fled to Morax? Oh, no, 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 wait. It says, following the battle came a great flood, okay, forcing the inhabitants. Okay, no, I think it was like all of Guili Assembly. So after they combined their people, everyone moved down to Liwei Harbor. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it. Geography, the Guili Assembly was centralized in the area now known as Guili Plains. At its height, it was said to have spread a thousand miles around with Stone Gate as its northern boundary. Through in-game measurements, assuming its territory was a circle with Guili Plains at its epicenter, it can be deduced that its western boundary was the edge of Juyan Karst. Its southern boundary was the area that is now the entrance of Liwei Harbor, and its eastern boundary was the end of Mingyun Village. Dang, that's big. Wow. That's so interesting. Okay, wow. So this Guizong is kind of a mysterious figure, but the Guili Assembly seems to be... Uh, a warm spot in uh, Morax's past, huh? Okay, interesting. Very interesting. All right, let's continue with um, reading about Guizong, though. Teach with wisdom. Be bound by virtue. Fortify the bones. Unite in ambition. These are Guizong's four commandments. Guizong is the late god of dust, who was one of the rulers of the Guli Assembly. She was kind-hearted and wise, but not particularly powerful. So she worked alongside the more powerful Morax to rule the Guli Assembly together. Guizong had a particular interest in mechanics. The Guizong Ballista was one of her handiworks, built with the aid of the Adepti, and she apparently collected Conria technology, such as ruin machines, for research. After the start of the Archon War, she ultimately lost her life in a destructive battle that laid waste to Duhua Marsh and Guili Plains. Personality. Guizong was a benevolent, gentle-natured goddess. She sympathized with humans, understanding their fragility and yearning for intelligence out of fear of their own mortality. Knowing that her strength was inferior to Morax's, she relied on strategy and wisdom to survive and allied with him so she could complement his brawn with her brains. During her life, she grew close to the other god. During their first meeting, she tried hiding how excited she was when she gave him the stone dumbbell that would symbolize their pledge, and many of the extant texts about the Guli assembly reference their bond. Okay, what kind of bond was this? What kind of bond was this? She hoped for her people to be wise and strong, to stand by a moral code, and to unite in protecting their home, the Guli assembly. She also taught her people how to tend to the soil, and herself was particularly fond of glaze lilies. In return, she was adored by her people. Guizong was devoted to the study of mechanics and collected dangerous machines such as rune hunters and rune guards for the sake of her research. 
With the help of the Adepti, she built the Guizong Ballista at the Mount Tianhang Pass to defend their territory from invaders. All right, appearance. Oh, wow, there's not much known about this. Goizong took the form of a young woman with billowing sleeves. Okay. Story, early life. Goizong was born before the Archon War and initially established her civilization at an unknown location. At some point, she met Morax amid a field of lilies, glazed lilies to be specific, and presented him with a stone dumbbell, now known as the Memory of Dust, as a mark of their pledge, although they never made a formal contract with each other. What? Wait, what, 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 what? That's unique for Morax. Not a formal contract, but there's some sort of pledge going on here. What is this? Is this romance? What's this? I'm so curious. What? Okay. Um, the two became allies, and Guizong, with the help of the Adepti, built the Guizong Ballista at Tianhang Pass to autonomously defend from invaders. She then moved her people north of Mount Tianhang, and supposedly to move in <laughs> with Morax and his folk. All right, Guili Assembly. Uh, Guizong taught her people agriculture, which greatly expanded their sphere of influence. While displaying her handiwork to Morax, she dubbed the area the Plains of the Returning and Departing or Guli Plains, deriving the name from the first character of her name combined with a character from the name Morax used at the time. The Guli Assembly was established co-ruled by the two gods alongside Marcosius, god of the stove. During the establishment of the Guili Assembly, Guizong established her four commandments. To unite in ambition is to be steadfast and immovable for all time. Wisdom is like water. It nourishes all those who receive it and in it is a reflection of the truth. Fortify the bones, that movement be supple when the time comes. Virtue grows tall like a tree. Though there be shade, it will flourish forever. At some point in time, Guizong created the Realm of Clouds located in Luhua Pool. Some unknown point later, the Adepti built an abode next to it to house the evil and ancient artifacts, ruin machines she collected while researching mechanics. Cloud Retainer, Guizong, and Morax often met up at Retainer's abode, to eat together. It is suggested that the three would each prepare a dish, which they would then eat at the table towards the middle of the pond. Guizong's seat was on the north side, with a bowl and a pair of chopsticks on the table. Archon War and Death. During the Archon War, Guizong and other Adepti fought to protect the people of Guili against the many evil gods and monsters that had plagued Li Wei's lands. 3,700 years ago, Guizong lost her life in a fierce battle over Guili Plains, during which black dust choked the heavens and a thousand rocks splintered. Oh my god. She died amidst the glazed lilies. Oh. Wearing one last lonely smile as she asked Morax to forget about the stone dumbbell she gave him and bemoaned the end of their journey together. Wait, wait, hold up, hold up. So she died in his arms, and this stone dumbbell that continuously is being brought up, like it's some kind of metaphor, or wink wink, what I'm assuming is a romantic relationship, right? Or at least romantic feelings, or a bond of that kind. She's asking him to forget about it, mostly because, as I'm assuming she's a kind goddess, it's her way of trying to, like, say don't think about me like don't suffer on my behalf like move on when i die when i die and bemoaned the end of their journey <laughs> oh no how can i be invested in a couple that's not even confirmed and she's not even like we haven't even seen her there's like barely nothing anyone knows about her uh oh <laughs> not her endearing me to morax more <laughs> shit okay um a massive flood swept through Duhill Marsh and Guli Plains, destroying the assembly. Its inhabitants, with the help of Mark, uh, Marcosius and the Adepti, traveled south for 10 days until they reached the land that would become Liwei Harbor. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. I mean, that's really sad the way she died. And it was probably horrific for Morax. Uh, but damn, I want to know more about that. All right, trivia. Zhang Li's vast knowledge and refined mannerisms at present are believed by fans to be the result of Gui Zong's influence as she was the brains to his brawn. 
This may be supported by Venti calling him a brutish, blundering buffoon, <laughs> though he only got to know Morax long after Guizong already passed. Oh, interesting, okay. Glazed lilies are a key element of the rite of parting, as Guizong was a dear friend, okay, friend to Zhongli, and glazed lilies were her favorite flower. Oh. Oh. That's sad. Wait, so the oh, the only reason why glazed lilies are involved in the Rite of Parting, especially with Morax's send-off, is because of their tie to Guizong? Oh my god, shut the fuck up. Zhongli can be seen fighting in Guizong's realm of clouds in his collected uh, assist trailer. Okay, we saw that. The maiden in a long indigo robe who wandered Guili Plains, spoken about in Records of the Gallant Dust, is suggested to have some link to Guizong based on its references to dust and the location of her sightings. It is likely that primordial jade cutter, which Morax carved as a gift for a certain someone, was intended for Guizong before her untimely death. In its description, when tender feelings are reduced to dust on the wind, is a nod towards the way Guizong's body dissipated into dust upon her death, and precedes the line about how Morax would proceed to use the sword to cut down his former friends. Oh my god. The maiden in records of the gallant dust wielded a sword which, given her links to Guizong, may further indicate that Guizong herself wielded swords when she was alive. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> he made her a sword? <laughs> what? That's so... What? He made her a sword? And that sword? That sword is so pretty. Someone's poetry in Lingju Pass uses Guizong's name. However, the phrase is using the meaning of the characters, which roughly translates to return to the end. Uh, etymology. Guizong is a legendary Chinese beast mentioned uh, in Yuan Leizhu. It is a type of legendary ape-like beast said to know all about the past but cannot know the future. Following the theme of gods in Genshin Impact being named after demons, in the Ars Goetia, uh, may be named after the demon, Hagenti, one of the great presidents of hell. While the name Morax went by during the Guili Assembly is unknown, his current alias Zhongli also contains the characters Guizong used when she came up with Guili. Oh, okay. Her title in Chinese means Dust Lord God. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Wow, crumbs, absolute crumbs. I want more about Guizong, specifically in her relation to, to Morax. My goodness, I didn't realize Morax was capable of uh, being tender towards someone like this. I mean, not that he was harsh when talking about Havria, but the way he's uh, being depicted on handling and treating Guizong is is uh, very, very tender indeed. My goodness, okay. Wow. I did want to quickly glance at Osiol for a second. Um, Osiol, also called That Which Lies in the Deep, is an ancient god and sea monster that was defeated by Rex Lapis during the Archon War 2000 years ago. He was defeated at Stone Forest where Rex Lapis pinned him to the ocean floor using his stone spears. At the height of his power, Osiol was a powerful god during the Archon War who came to blows with Morax, the god of Geo. He was capable of creating tsunamis as tall as Liwei's mountains. Even after 2,000 years of being sealed, Osiel was powerful enough to withstand the attacks of three Adepti and retaliate to destroy the replica Guizong Ballistas. At some point in time, Osiel married Beishet. Uh, after being reawakened by Child, he takes the form of a five-headed Hydra with a body made of water. Very little is known about Osiel's history. Zhang Li refers to their conflict as an ancient grudge, suggesting he and Osiel had a long-standing enmity for reasons yet unknown. However, tales of Rex Lapis' victory over the sea monsters have become a much beloved tale among the people of Liwei. The tale of the battle between Osiel and Rex Lapis varies by person, but all Liwei people agree in that Rex Lapis wielded the sacred lance Vortex Vanquisher, to pierce the rainbow of Osiel and pinned him in the center of the deep sea. People who sleep at Stone Forest have reported reliving Osiel's memories of his defeat at Rex Lapis's hands. 
It is unclear whether this phenomenon stems from OCL's powers or if it stems from something else. During Heart of Glaze, Child uses the Fatui manufactured sigils of permission to unleash, okay, yes, we know about this, um, in order to steal the Gnosis. Ning Wong <laughs> dropped the Jade Chamber on it. Uh, the Traveler gains a monolith fragment, which was part of the spear Morax used to seal it away. Okay, another thing I wanted to look at was Qi. Uh, this was mentioned that Zhongli had some ties to this. So Qi, also known as Qingse in the ancient language, are a type of dragon-like sea monster that lived around the Liwei region and the oceans beyond it. One lived in Qingse village before being defeated by Morax, and the legends surrounding it are detailed in the world quest, The Qi of Yore. Thousands of years ago, Qi made its nest in the area known as Mount Jingse and took control of the region. For this, Morax fought it at a great height and succeeded in slaying the beast. However, even after its death, the Qi's power continued to seep into the land. To suppress its power, Morax defeated each aspect of the Qi. Rex Lapis overcame the Qi, but the Qi could not perish in its entirety. Thus did Rex Lapis conquer each of its facets in turn. Its spirit was bound in the north, its bones were pinned in the southeast, its flesh was incarcerated in the northwest, its soul was fettered in the northeast, and its form was crushed in the southwest. Wow. Additionally, Morax taught the people of Qingse village to make geo statues to crush the Qi's remaining power. Many of these statues can be found scattered across the area around the village, some of which have glowing features for unknown reasons. Oh, are those those little like dragon statues that I saw? Oh, additionally, crystalline orange adeptus amber can also be found around the village, which helps suppress and crush the Qi's power. Over time, a legend formed that the Qi's body turned into Mount Qingse after it died, with its scales forming the terraced fields. People in Liwei believe that the blood-fed trees in Bishu Plain grew by absorbing the Qi's blood, and that the area where they grew are the Qi's eyes. However, Zhongli reveals that the Mountain stood long before Qi ravaged the area. During the world quest, the traveler enters the vault in northwestern Qingse. Within it is a giant glowing orb suspended in midair, underneath which is the Qingse cache, cache, cache mechanism. Um, upon activating the mechanism, the traveler has to defend the mechanism from various rune machines while rocks crash down from the ceiling. After completing the challenge, the treasure room is opened, but the Traveler and Paimon report to Granny that no traces of Chi were found, leaving the glowing orb within the vault a mystery. I actually um, did this quest and it sucked ass. This defending the thing, it took me so many tries. I had to come back to this quest so many times to get it right or to actually finish it. Um, the skipper, who lived around a thousand years ago, defeated at least one chi and turned its spine into his great sword, known as Serpent Spine. Oh, cool. Very cool. Okay. I just wanted to um, read about that for just a little bit because I was actually really curious and Zhongli, it's just another <laughs> conquest of Zhongli, so it's adding to his, uh, his majesty, if you will. But let's continue. Okay, so we were back on Morax's page. I just wanted to, we left off talking about Azdaha and then the Chi is mentioned that Rex Lapis slayed the Chi, um, which is what we just read about. Morax is also the source and namesake of Teyvat's currency, Mora. Morax's Gnosis was used to mint Mora at the Golden House before he retired from his position as Argon and ceded his Gnosis to the Sarista. Currently, Rex Lapis resides in Liwei Harbor as Zhang Li and works as a consultant at the funeral parlor. Personality. Little is known about Rex Lapis's personality before becoming an Archon, but descriptions and legends about him depict a deity much different from the one known by the people today. During the Archon War, it is said that none could ascribe gentleness to him, and that his nature was that of boundless slaughter. Good fucking god. Venti, the current form of Barbados, a longtime friend of Rex Lapis, and the only other remaining member of the original seven describes Rex Lapis as a brutish, blundering buffoon and an old blockhead. Morax, in turn, sees him as a drunken fool that is a disgrace to the arts. Due to his old age, Rex Lapis frequently reminisces about memories and experience. Despite being the god of contracts, Rex Lapis recognizes that all situations are different, and therefore justice may vary depending on the situation. He also doesn't mind little maneuvers behind the scenes. 
Surprisingly, he takes no offense to ka criticisms of Li Wei's dependence on him. In fact, it turns out that even he agrees with her sentiments. Morax is very slow to adapt to change, but nonetheless accepts it as inevitable, something which most of the Adepti have had trouble adapting to. He had originally convinced himself that Li Wei would still need him, but after hearing a merchant tell a worker that they were done for the day while going incognito, began questioning himself and set up an elaborate trial to see if Li Wei could survive without his guidance. This is true even well after assuming the identity of Zhang Li, where he continually thinks in the old ways, albeit having some change every once in a while. Appearance. During formal events, such as the Rite of Dissension, Rex Lapis takes the form of a half-dragon, half-lin creature. However, based on other depictions of him, he typically takes a human-like form. Statues of the Seven in Liwei depict him as an adult man wearing a hood and robes wrapped around his legs, holding a cube. In Yaksha's The Guardian Adepti, his back is shown, donning a white robe with a hood and wearing long, wide pants. His hands are depicted orange, with vein-like markings traveling up his arms. The Rex Incognito series claims he changes forms frequently depending on the situation, having appeared in the form of different men and women throughout history, but always has bright amber eyes in any form he takes. History. Before the Argon War, Morax was already known as the Lord of, of Geo. He was close with Guizong, the goddess of dust, and they formed a settlement for their people in Guili Plains, which was named after them. He was also on good terms with Marcosius and Madame Ping. However, after the Argon War broke out, Guizong perished in a battle that laid waste to Guili Plains and Duhua Marsh. Afterwards, Morax moved their people south of Mount Tianhang to the place now known as Liwei Harbor. To protect his new city, Morax formed a contract with the Adepti to defend the harbor as he continued waging war against his many enemies. Chi Ocel and Zhao's former master were defeated by his hand while Havria, too gentle for this brutal period, was slain by her own people. The survivors of Salterra were spread throughout Liwei, many of them coming to Liwei Harbor. At some point, he befriended a massive dragon, Azdaha, who I'm assuming that is, and gave it sight who became a lifelong friend, but the dragon eventually deteriorated from erosion. Okay, we know this. After defeating the other gods, he sealed them underground where their physical bodies decomposed and became one with the earth. Their souls, however, were immortal. Their desire for revenge and lust for life seeped into the earth, resulting in miasmas, plagues, monster attacks, and other such calamities. To quell these disturbances, Morax summoned the Yakshas to aid him in battle, endlessly subduing the ancient gods. As the Archon War came to a close 2,000 years ago, Morax emerged as one of the seven victors. The seven would dine together in Liwei. Morax also met Baal's Kagemusha, Belzebub, during one of these meetings. Two millennia later, only Morax and Barbados remained as the original Archons amongst the seven. The other five died and were eventually replaced. Morax's level of involvement in the catastrophe 500 years ago is currently unknown, but he is aware of how greatly it affected the Sarista. An unknown party later made a contract with him in which he would not disclose the truth of the incident to anyone who might ask. Okay, so we are back on the character story pages. Uh, we left off as he is Morax, and we clicked on that. So we're back at the very beginning. He is Morax, the overlord at Rex Lapis, who rules Liwei, and the Geo Archon of the Seven Archons. The very money that circulates through Tebot, Mora, is named after him. When night falls and bustling Liwei begins to slumber, he will sometimes stand atop the towering mountains and gaze upon the city, which he made with his own hands. To the people of Liwei, Rex Lapis has many divine titles. When he laid down Liwei's laws by his divine might, he was the god of contracts. When he minted the first Mora and made Liwei strong by dint of commerce, the merchants revered him as the god of commerce. He has lived through countless years and is the eldest of the seven, and so historians call him the god of history. Thousands of years ago, the forebears of the citizens of Liwei Harbor struck stones together to start fires and used piled stones to create stoves. These blessings, derived from the Geo element, led the Geo Archon to gain the title of god of the stove. People from other lands tend to call him Morax, though the people of Liwei prefer to use the term Rex Lapis, but in the hearts of lovers of opera and children, Morax's onstage aspect, the all-conquering defender of Liwei, the warrior god, is the most fascinating. The delicacies that Rex Lapis discovered while lost in the streets, 
the plaques inscribed with his handwriting, a famous opera that he once starred in. Playing the part of a warrior, many stories and tales of Liyue are, when studied closely, stories of people visited by their deity at some point. And the citizens of Liyue are most proud indeed of that history. Character Story 4 As the founder of Liyue Harbor, contracts are the most important thing to Morax. From simple monetary exchange and agreements between merchants to the ancient laws that Morax himself laid down, there is no part of the city life untouched by contracts. To merchants, contracts are the most important standard to which they hold themselves. Deadlines, invoices, shipping destinations, only a refined and strict order can sustain vibrant commerce which is itself the lifeblood of Liyue Harbor. Thus, the Chi Sing punished violators of such laws unceasingly, not only to uphold the divine rulings of Morax, but also to allow Liyue to maintain its vitality. Through the millennia, every generation of the Liyue Chi Sing commits to interpreting the law, including subtle amendments to plug loopholes found in the law. Any loopholes that remain undiscovered are seen by the merchants as permissible if unaddressed, and they make killings off of such holes until they are discovered and patched up by the Liwei Chising. Amid this game of cat and mouse, the book that collates such amendments has reached a whopping 279 pages thick. The person currently responsible for maintaining this book, the Tian Quan Ning Wang, is secretly and humorously referred to as the Tailor of Li Wei in honor of her speed in patching these laws up and for her sharpness of eye. But no matter how complicated or tangled mortal laws become, one of these stands above all others in the eyes of Rex Lapis. The one who reneges on their words shall suffer the wrath of the rock. Character Story 5 Rex Lapis, most ancient of the seven, has lived far too long. Rex Lapis still remembers that moment when the final Archon took their divine seat, thus ending the Archon War and the era of warring gods. The seven were a diverse lot and dispersed far and wide, but they all shouldered the burden of guiding humanity. As time passed, many of the seven's titles changed hands, and only two remain of the first seven, Rex Lapis and the Animo Archon. Carefree Barbados, the Animal Archon, is the second eldest of the seven. When Barbados first came to Liyue, Rex Lapis believed his fellow Archon to have encountered some terrible crisis in pursuit of their duties, thus requiring his aid. So when Barbados descended in a gust of wind, the Geo Archon had already prepared himself to receive this neighboring deity <laughs> and lend what help he may. But as he looked, the Animal Archon tossed a wine bottle at him. Here's some wine from Mondstadt. Care for a taste? To forsake one's duty to deliver a single bottle of wine, what a preposterous notion. <laughs> Yet the Animo Archon kept coming to visit, to explore Liwei Harbor, all sorts of strange questions on his lips. The Animo Archon's questions knew as little limits as the wine in his hands. From then on, the first seven would often gather in Liwei. Rex Lapis still remembers how those wines tasted. The world has changed much since then, and all that was once familiar has faded into memory. The seven seats changed and again were changed, till five of the seven at the table were all departed. Nor would the duty of guiding humanity be honored by the new Archons. Even the hardest rocks may be worn down after 3,000 years, nor would the wind ever return again. One drizzly day, the ancient ruler was strolling about Liwei Harbor and overheard a merchant telling one of his workers, You've finished your duties, go ahead and call it a day. Long did he stand amidst the milling crowd. Have I already finished my duties? That which rises from the sea. During the Archon Wars, every corner of Teva was consumed in the fires of conflict. Not only did gods fight amongst themselves, but countless wicked things also sought to expand their domains. One such type of creature caused no end of woe for the Geo Archon, long before he took that title along with his place among the Seven. These foul creatures, straight from the murky depths of the ocean abyss, had a squishy exterior and possessed agile tentacles that would live on even after being cut off. Ew. Even secreting some thick and revolting fluid in the process. That's disgusting. This alone would have been enough to make them the most monstrous of all creatures, and still it was not the pinnacle of their monstrosity. What made them so truly terrible was their small size, which gave them the ability to duck into unimaginably small nooks and crannies. No space was too narrow for them, neither the wooden boards of tables and chairs, nor the seams of windows and doors and curtain folds, nor even books and brushes. 
Many a poor soul had, on at least one occasion, unwittingly stretched out their hand, only to quickly retract it in horror with a blood-curling scream at the sensation of something cold, clammy, and damp, while one or more of these despicable creatures came crawling up their arm, leaving a shiny trail behind them. Ew! At the behest of the people of Leeway, Morax agreed to wipe these creatures out, but these parasites upon civilization could not be destroyed like enemies on a battlefield. By simply summoning a storm of stone spears that would shatter the earth and churn the soil. Still, he was the god of contracts. His word had to be his bond. So, he went through the town from house to house with prisons of stone, seizing these creatures one by one and locking them away for good. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> so he was just walking around with these tiny stone prisons, like capturing them like termites or something, going house to house? Why is that so cute to imagine? <laughs> these long, this long campaign of pest extermination taught Morax the true meaning of burden lifted. <laughs> the grueling campaign itself and the terrible smell of those ocean creatures' secretions left a lasting impression on the deity. Today, even when he goes out incognito as the mortal man Zhongli, Morax gives those living, squirming seafood products a wide berth. <laughs> well, except for dishes where said seafood products have been sliced and diced into oblivion, such as seafood tofu. He'll quite happily eat those. <laughs> All right, Gnosis. Um, once the rite of parting of which Zhongli was both director and star, was over, the Fatui Harbinger named Senora appeared before him. By prior contract, she was here to claim the Geo Archon Morax's Gnosis. Before the Traveler and the two Fatui Harbingers, Zhongli related the truth that he had established a contract with the Cryo Archon. In his own words, this was his final contract to end all contracts. Yet, no matter how one looks at it, the loss of his divine ability to defend Li Wei was too great a price to pay. Even amongst mortals, the basis of a contract is equivalent exchange. And for the god of contracts, who must have established countless such agreements in his long years of existence, such an important contract must have come with its benefits. Now, the Geo Archon has given away his Gnosis as his part of the deal. What then must the Cryo Archon have wagered to balance the scales? Oh, how we all would like to know. Oh, how we all would like to frickin' know. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna be listening to character mentions now. You mean the gentleman from Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor? My men sometimes speak of the rumors surrounding him. He sounds interesting. Yes, if I get the chance, I'd like to meet him someday. That Zhang Li from the Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor seems to be quite an incredible man. Just think, common folk might gang up to commit a murder. We exorcists vanquish demons, but he alone buries the bodies of the Adepti. Zhang Li looks young, but his personality's a bit dusty. Knows everything, but doesn't fret over anything. Hmm, couldn't be the he's, uh... <laughs> Forget it, whatever. Ooh, does she know? She must. Interesting. The gentleman from the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor? Hmm, clearly he's an extremely learned individual. And I do have a lot of respect for him. But his mindset is too traditional for me. He thinks in the same tired old terms as Rex Lapis did. If he were more of an original thinker, I'm sure he'd be a great asset to me in reaching my objectives. <laughs> she was like, yeah, if he's not useful to me, I don't care. <laughs> wow. Zhang Li of the Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor. He's very versed in a great deal of affairs. Although such... Excellent pawns are of no use to me until I know their weaknesses. <laughs> Another leading leeway lady is like, yeah, I need to make sure he's useful to me first. <laughs> that gentleman claims to be immortal, yet is very familiar with my master, who is an adeptus. Master once said, if you see him drinking on a stone stool in front of my abode, do not disturb him. Let him sit quietly for a while. And that's precisely what I did. 
Oh, that's sad. All right, Mr. Scrunkly. So, how has Mr. Zhongli been lately? Not bad, you say? Seems he's had no problem acclimating to mortal life. <laughs> he sure had me fooled. Such a fiasco mustn't be so easily forgiven. The only way to reconciliation is fierce combat. <laughs> what do you mean I'm no match for him? <laughs> All right. We already listened to these, but I'm replaying them just for consistency. There's far more to that man than meets the eye. As for the extent of his power, lots to look forward to, I think. Well, we'll see, won't we? All right. The Traveler and Paimon. Let's see what they have to say. It never stops raining on Yashiori Island. I heard it's because of the lingering evil energy. Evil energy? What's that? Sounds terrifying. It's caused by the remains of an evil god somewhere on the island. Because its power hasn't fully dispersed, the remaining energy causes all sorts of misfortunes. That's what I meant when I said evil energy. Oh, that makes sense. But mm, Paimon doesn't think rain is a bad thing. Maybe that god has been crying all this time because they were bullied. Crying? I don't think gods can cry. I mean, I've never seen Venti or Zhongli cry before. There are exceptions. If you pinch Paimon, you'll be able to see a crying god. Mm hmm. Are you a god? Paimon sure is. Okay, let me guess. The flying god of silly questions? The god of slimes? Or the god of being fished out from the water? Paimon's none of those. As your bodyguard, Paimon is the god of protection. <laughs> Paimon being sus as always. <laughs> All right, let's listen to Venti. Have you seen that gentleman around? Huh? He's just a normal man by the name of Zhang Li now? Oh, that must be quite the change for that old blockhead. Come with me to see him, will you? I have a vintage I dug up from Windrise that I can take as a condolence gift. Oh. Uh, did he still seem strong when you saw him? How strong? Am I likely to get blown away? I'd kill for them to interact. Like, I want them to interact so bad. I come across a lot of fussy eaters, but Mr. Zhang Li is very particular and has no problem getting straight to what he has to say. The first time I served him salt and pepper tofu, he took just one bite and then proceeded to say... It would be better to try sea salt extracted from the shallow seas of Guyun Stone Forest because it would bring a fresh sense of depth to the tofu. I tried it, and the taste was just so different. He's just amazing, don't you think? Honestly, as someone who's worked in the restaurant business, having a customer like this was awful, and I hated it. <laughs> Can I ask, Zhang Li, what does he do with his days? Huh? Birds? Antiques? Flowers? Hmm. What deeper meaning do they hold? This honestly gives me the vibes of that Spider-Man meme. My father and brother entertained that gentleman as a guest once. From the way they were acting, he must be a very high-profile figure indeed. I also heard that he directs funerals for the Adepti, so he must surely have great depth to his character. We should do some digging and see what we can find out about him. On brand for Sing Cho. He's <laughs> trying to find the dirt. <laughs> there was this one fella who invited me to perform at his place back when there weren't many who would give my music the time of day. I was touched, let me tell you what. Like, hey, someone gets it. I agreed right away. But when I got there, I found out that he was the consultant at the Wong Sheng Funeral Parlor. Oh, what a weird guy. I mean... How is that appropriate? I am still shocked at the accent, but I will say this is actually like really fucking cute. This is really sweet that he wanted to support his people's music, regardless of if it's traditional or not. Like, come on, come on. That's adorable. Mr. Zhang Li has so much in-depth knowledge on so many topics. He's like a walking library. You know what I mean? He's a total savant, though he never flaunts it. I could tell just by looking at him. People like him rarely shy away from taking on complex problems alone. So in my estimation, he's certainly not a potential client. And yet, somehow, 
I can't help but think I know him from somewhere. It's hard to describe the feeling. I asked my father about it, and he just said something to the effect of he didn't know either. Though he seemed a little evasive. It was so strange. Anyway, makes me wonder if my father is hiding something from me. Hm. All right, then. If he won't tell me what's going on, I'll just have to find out for myself. I really want to know more about Yanfei and her father and who her father is. She's such a cool character. The customs of the opera are very particular and are passed down from generation to generation. Sometimes I find that I only know the hows, but not the whys behind what we do. But when speaking with Zhang Li, it is abundantly evident that he knows the origins behind almost everything. Who wouldn't be delighted to have such a connoisseur in their audience? Yeah, anybody who's appreciative of the classical arts deserves a sticker. But let's look at the birthday cards, because these are kind of cute sometimes. I hope this finds you well. This is the final day of the year. Thinking back upon the years past at this time never fails to make me sigh. Mortal lives are like fish swimming amidst the rapids, or like vegetation growing beneath boulders. They are weak yet strong, transient yet timeless, truly inscrutable. This year has been one of many more changes than usual. Of these variables, meeting you was the most memorable. How will someone as unique as yourself spend days of birth? I am well appraised of the more common practices, but I am curious as to your method of celebration. I am still getting used to a simple life such as this. It is a shame, but idle days do not seem to pass more easily than hectic ones. Would you happen to have a free day? I would like to take a stroll. Aww. With your companionship, perhaps even familiar sights may yet appear new once more. Oh, that was sweet. All right, year's end. Let's look at this one. Before I had even noticed, it is now the last day of the year. It's a rather special day, which not only marks the end of one year, but the beginning of another. I dwell in contemplation every time this day comes. Time, history, everything that flows in this world comes together in the last moment of this day. Whether strong waves or a trickle, they move on undeterred. You've certainly been to a lot of places and done many things this year. Your presence is like a clear mirror on the earth. A mirror can reveal a person's nature, reflect highs and lows of emotions, and illuminate the souls of heaven and earth. Wow, on this special day, I too would like to see this world's mirror. For someone who has journeyed for a long time, perhaps it is time to pause and take a break. If you are available, I hope we can meet up. Conversation over tea will be sure to lift your spirits. That was so kind. What? <sighs> Not me, like... <laughs> Uh-oh, here we go. Here we go. Not the fondness starting. No. Crap. All right, next letter. A year's end letter. Yet another year is coming to an end. As per tradition, it is time to write letters to friends and reminisce about old times. Recently, I was entrusted to Director Hu to visit Kinsei Village. The village is peaceful and prosperous these days, full of joy and the bounties of nature. Nothing soothes one's heart more than such tranquil sights and the melodious sounds of the villagers' chatter. I almost felt obliged to look for someone to share in such delights, and as such, I picked a few chilies for you. <laughs> Eating them in the winter is conductive to health, but if spicy food is not to your liking, you may use them to decorate your room instead. <laughs> what? The strings of red chilies will surely add liveliness to your home. Wait, is that like a cultural thing? The idea of like hanging little chilies, like little fairy lights <laughs> in, uh, in the teapot or something is, is a little fun. Um, I wonder if that's a cultural thing. You guys can let me know. Alrighty, let's read some of this trivia. Zhang Li is one of the characters with ornaments that glow. While wearing his default outfit, when Zhang Li's elemental burst is ready, the amber gemstone on his chest will glow along with his vision. Oh, cool. Zhang Li may be one of, if not the, oldest god in Teyvat at over 6,000 years old. Um, in the Teyvat travel guide, the author, Alice, names Zhang Li as her companion during her travels to that region. That's really interesting. I can't wait to check in on that info later down the line. According to Zhang Ling, Zhang Li's palette is extremely precise. He could distinguish the kind of salt she used. Okay, we read that in the mentions. Um, on the Wang Shu in bulletin board, one anonymous message is likely Zhang Li's. Oh, let's go look at that. 
Okay. Uh, thank you for the stay. My scholar friend of Sumeru and I talked happily into the night from debating the principles of the world and elements to recounting stories of our hometown's famous specialities, culture, and nearly every topic one could think of. Reminiscing like this really makes one's heart swell with emotion. Oh, I should be getting back to the Wangshu funeral parlor after the rain stops. Otherwise, Director Hu may come and drag me back herself. Reply, well, we hope you enjoyed your time here and look forward to your next visit. Also, please tell your friends in Leeway Harbor about our wonderful establishment. Oh, huh. Who does he know in Sumeru? Wait, what? That's interesting. All right. Zhang Li is the first character whose story quest chapter name did not derive from his constellation. Zhang Li is also the first character whose in-game profile and story sections change depending on the Arkham Quest completion. Oh. Huh. Interesting. Zhang Li's Chinese voice actor is one of the directors of Genshin Impact's Chinese voice actors. Oh, cool. Zhang Li was heavily foreshadowed to be Morax before it was confirmed with the release of Chapter 1, Act 3 in version 1.1. Oh, cool. Okay, I'm going to scroll past a little bit of this. The Rex Incognito book series implies that Rex Lapis has amber eyes no matter what shape he takes, a feature that Zhang Li also has. Later on in an event, speaking to Zhang Li reveals that there wasn't quite so much ostentatious shape shifting as the book would have you believe. Oh, okay. <laughs> Zhang Li calls Rex Lapis's corpse an exuvia. The word exuvia refers to the outer skin molted by some creatures as a new exoskeleton grows in. During the Rite of Dissension, Ivanovich, Ivanovich states that he heard the Exuvia, which Rex Lapis appears as during formal events, is a celestial cross between two of Liwei's celestial creatures, which the Chinese version specifies to be a dragon and quillin. This suggests that the Exuvia is only one of potentially several forms Rex Lapis can appear in. This information was one of the many circulating leeway during the rite that can be either true or false since the information was something Ivanovich only heard about. And as during the rite, Zhang Li was also stated to be the god of the stove, which was proven... Okay, wait, that's event stuff. I don't want to spoil anything. Um, the World Quest Treasure Lost, Treasure Found, and Stone Tablet compilations both state that the Guili Plains are named after the god of dust and the Geo Archon himself. Okay, we know this. Several stories claim that the Geo Archon uses pole arms, such as in Tebot Travel Guide, Liwei, and Diary of Roald the Adventurer, which is also Zhongli's weapon of choice. Although he has some difficulty, Zhongli manages to repair the Guizong Ballista, which was constructed by the Adepti. Later, Kaching and a detachment of Mililith are found investigating the repairs as getting it working within a single night should have been impossible for a mortal. Ah, uh, Kaching was on that shit. <laughs> Compared to Venti, Zhongli is more secretive with his identity as the Geo Archon, making fewer people aware of his true identity. Cloud Retainer appears to be aware that he is Morax. Okay. Zhao is also aware that he is Morax. Senora and Tartalia are um, aware. We know this. His fellow Archons are somewhat aware of his current status. Venti is surprised to learn that Morax had since stepped down and assumed the identity of Zhang Li. A is aware. I. A is aware that he had stepped down but does not comment. Okay. The Sarista is aware, obviously, because they made a deal. Others have their suspicions but are unable to make connections. Kaching likens him to Rex Lapis, stating that he is too much like the Argon for her liking. Okay, we heard her say that. Hu Tao suspects that he is an adeptus due to being calm, collected, and knowledgeable, although she does not make any connections to him being the Geo Argon. Yanfei suspects that he may be Morax as she has a strange feeling about him and her father. Okay, we read that in her character mentions. Zhang Li is one of the few currently playable characters who acknowledges or even seems to be aware that the Traveler is from another world, presumably because of his status as an Argon. In his collected Muslini trailer, Zhang Li can be seen fighting in the Realm of Clouds, a domain created by the Adepti to hold the artifacts Guizong collected. Um, 
The Chinese Taivat Food Notes entry celebrating his birthday gave a real-life recipe for Zhongli's special dish. Oh, cool. The real-life version takes two hours to simmer, and the recipe doesn't count prep time. Good lord. Zhongli also appears in Taivat Food Notes blog post for Adeptus Temptation, in which he supervises the preparation of the dish. During the cooking process, he and Sing Cho sneak a taste of the lean meat taken from the chicken and duck used for the soup stock, much to Zhongli's chagrin. Wait, that's cute. Him and Sing Cho sneaking bites from the pot. The meteor summoned by Zhongli's elemental burst, Planet Befall, resembles a burr puzzle, specifically the six piece burr, which is also known as the Chinese cross. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Zhongli wields the Vortex Vanquisher in his portrait art. Zhongli actually uses a combination of his equipped weapon and stone spears during his normal attack sequence. Switching between the two as he attacks, he is currently the only playable character with this specific trait. Zhang Li can also be seen wielding one of these stone spheres in his Wish artwork. Sweet. We are going to be reading a little bit of the etymology really quick. In demonology, Morax is the 21st demon of the Ars Goetia and a president of hell ruling over 30 or 32, according to other authors, legions of demons. He teaches astronomy and other liberal sciences and gives good and wise familiars that know the virtues of all herbs and precious stones. He is depicted both as a man with the head of a bull and a bull with the head of a man. His title, Vagomundo, is Latin for I wander the world. His Chinese title means leisurely wanderings in the mortal world. His constellation, Lapis Dei, is Latin for the stone of God. It follows the same pattern as Venti's constellation, Carmen Day. Zhang Li is likely named after Zhang Li Quan, one of the eight immortals, a group of eight legendary Zhan uh, in Daoist mythology. The figure is said to have possessed a large magical fan that can resurrect the dead, as well as alchemical powers, which he used to transmute stones and base metals into gold and silver to save people from poverty. In the game's Chinese texts, the Adepti are known as Jian. Oh. The first character of Zhongli's name in simplified Chinese may cause much ambiguity and confusion. The simplified form of the two different traditional Chinese characters uh, have two different meanings. There's also a simplified Chinese character, which can be used as the simplified form when used as a surname. This has only been made of an official simplified form. Okay. Strictly can only, okay. I'm just seeing if any of this adds more like fun context to his character, but I think it's just technical stuff about the language. Um, let's scroll down a little bit. The name Zhongli is a pun that can signify him stepping down from his position as Rex Lapis. Zhong in Zhongli is homophonous with the word Zhong, which means clock in Chinese. And they are even written the exact same way in simplified Chinese. Li is the common word for leaving or away. The name can therefore be taken to mean off the clock or time of leaving slash departure. <laughs> That's cool. The Li in Li Wei is a word for precious stone, usually referring to lapis lazuli or glass. The word itself contains Zhongli's Li with an extra radical to its left. This re radical resembles the word uh, Wang? Wang? meaning king. Zhang Li's Li dropping off uh, may be symbolic of him stepping down from his reign over Li Wei. This analysis only applies to the simplified Chinese version of the name. This would also imply that Li Wei's name carries a secondary meaning, the month of the king's departure, which bears striking similarity to the pun on Zhang Li's name. That's really cool. Zhang Li's Li is additionally was used as the archaic form of Qi, which refers to a mythical creature such as a mountain demon or mountain beast, which may or may not be a cryptic statement alluding to Rex Lapis being an adeptus. The name used in Zhang Li's sixth constellation, Chrysos, is known as the spirit of gold in Greek mythology. Very cool. Super neat. I don't know. I love little trivia notes like that. So... <laughs> Anyway, moving on. These are the voice lines in reference to Morax, not Zhongli. Before Rex Lapis parted from this world, I'd say a little prayer every morning. Oh, great God of wealth up above, please bless my day with more Mora to love. But uh, now, I guess I just 
pray to myself. Oh, divine Dory, right here and now, please bless my day with more Mora to count. <laughs> okay, so Ganyu, first up. I have absolute faith in Rex Lapis. It was only through his leadership that we were able to repel the monsters and subdue the sea creatures, and thus protect the peace of Liyue. The sight of him protecting the masses, and the memory of our centuries of camaraderie. I shall never forget it. With authority over a thousand comes responsibility to a thousand. Rex Lapis knows the meaning of hardship better than anyone else in Liyue. He has seen everything that has happened from ancient times to the present day, and yet he was forced to give up his entire life. Compared to him, I'm just an everyday vision holder with everyday responsibilities. I can't complain about my workload. Okay, wow. That was profound. I'm going to skip some of this stuff, though, because I don't want to spoil any of her character stuff. So we'll leave that when we actually get to Ganyu. Okay, so I'm actually going to leave Raiden's Shoguns out until we get to her quest. So we're going to listen to the Traveler. To think the Geo Archon had signed a contract with the Cryo Archon. I wonder what the contents of their agreement were. Paimon doesn't care who you are. Making a deal with the Tsaritsa is super dangerous. Be that as it may. Since Morax is the god who understands the basis of contracts the best, he's definitely given this some thought. Well, that's true. Morax himself called it the contract to end all contracts. I trust that we will witness the truth and its denouement play out. Dang, she said I th I believe we're gonna we're gonna witness the truth. Wow. I hope Come so. To think of it. While Rex Lapis enjoys visiting his people in private, he only descends officially once every year. None of the other gods do this. Hmm. Does Rex Lapis have any deeper intentions? I have my guesses. You see, those annual divine predictions have already captured the hearts of the people of Liyue too much. Round and around, they analyze and scrutinize every single word finding limitless hidden meanings within them. What do you think would happen to Liyue if such divine predictions were available every day? Huh! Paimon gets it now. Paimon would be offering Rex Lapis's favorite snacks to him every day. If you could just get Mora straight from Morax's hands, who would ever need to do a day of honest work? You made <laughs> some logical leaps. But that's basically how it is. I love that the Traveler, like, thinks about this kind of stuff. That they, I mean, she's discussing it with Paimon, but for the most part, she's, it's showing that she's, like, really thought and, like, considered certain things about the world that she travels through. And I really like that. Okay, so since the rest of these aren't, they don't seem like they're specific to Rex Lapis, I'm going to skip them just in case we don't, I don't want to spoil anything for when we get to their own character quests. So we're just going to go to his voice line specifically. <laughs> there is quite a lot. So let's jump in. A new contract. Okay. I'm still on leave, but I can accompany you for a while. What name should I use on the contract? I have a great many names, though when on leave, I tend to go by Zhongli. And you, Traveler, what name will you be signing on this contract? I like how tentative he sounds. You know, it's like genuinely an introduction. Every journey has its final day. Don't rush. Mm. Where do you want to go next? If you'd like to see Liyue's tourist spots, I have a few references. Okay. Boats are made for transferring commodities back and forth. <laughs> and those that come across Liyue tend to stay a while. So it is where many things come to settle. Okay. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory, but okay. Osmanthus wine tastes oh, the same as I remember. Oh, there it is. 
But where, where are those, those who, who share, share the memory? The memory? <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> Violet grass is a plant that enjoys a moist environment and is best picked after it rains. If you should choose to pick any, be sure to store them appropriately. Okay. <laughs> we should look for a place to take shelter. I'll be fine, but we don't want you catching a cold. Oh, he's worried about us this getting sick. This weather is no good for being on vacation. <laughs> we should go and take in an opera. Oh, let's just do that. <laughs> I hope today, too, shall be prosperous. Okay. Want a quick meal to pick us back up? I know a good place in Chuhu Rock. I will always be down for food. By this time of night, we will have already missed Miss Yoon's play. But Liwei is full of interesting places to explore, even at night. I like how he knows the time that her plays start and end. <laughs> the market is closed and the port has settled. Go get some rest. Nothing can be accomplished without rules or standards. No matter if it is mortals or adepti, everyone has their place. Hmm. This rule is what keeps Liwa in peace. Okay. Gold is Liwa's treasure. It is the blood that runs through her heart. As for whether your own heart shines like gold, we will have to wait and see. Oh, interesting. You and I have a contract. So feel free to discuss anything at all within the scope of said contract. Oh, he's narrowing it down to just the contract. We can discuss matters that fall oh. outside of our contract, too. Okay. After all, I have been on this land for a time and have come to know a thing or two. Of course, I do hope you can do some things for me as well. That would only be fair. Okay, okay, okay. Contracts Warming up a little bit. Define friendship, nor measure sentiment. So just what can we use to measure the weight of our emotions? I don't do you know. know the answer, friend? No. <laughs> it's called being human, I think. Not sure. Visions are also a type of contract. You should know that all power comes at a price. For every bit of power you gain, so too do you gain more responsibility. Wow. That was profound. Trade relies on both contracts and fairness. There is one thing you must never forget when making and abiding by a contract. If fairness is lost, then the contract shall become proof of one's deception. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> that might come back at some point. If you're heading to Jui Yungjin, please bring me back a bunch of Qingxin. Just one bunch is enough. Travel expenses. Uh, I almost forgot. <laughs> During the effective period of our contract, travel expenses are to be paid for by yourself. <laughs> Sorry to bother you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you speak of the young adeptus of Guili Plains. <sighs> Still fulfilling his duty to this very day. Please, give these painkillers to him on my behalf. Oh, and... Be sure not to let Paimon eat them. <laughs> Nothing of this world can withstand the power of this medicine. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> it reeks of wine. <laughs> that bard has just been through here, hasn't he? That drunkard is a <laughs> disgrace to the arts. <laughs> oh. Has he tricked you into getting drunk? <laughs> You're slurring a little. No. Wait a moment. I'll brew a pot of sobering tea. It'll be ready in only six hours, so <laughs> just wait a moment. <laughs> Despite the multitude of affairs that she deals with in a day, Ningguang always continues to press on. A rare gem indeed. I'm reminded of the time that she used to walk barefoot from Yao Guang Shoal Whoa. to the South Wharf, trying to sell her wares as she went. Oh my gosh. Time is cruel to humans. Wow, I didn't know that about her. Damn. The current overseer of the funeral parlor? <clears throat> <laughs> I cannot deal with that child. <laughs> Sorry, that 
was so that was so fun. That but, like, rascal from grumpy. Snezhnaya has yet to depart from Liyue. <laughs> no matter. Just let me know if he gives you any trouble. I shall deal with the matter swiftly. Okay. <laughs> It's said that Child and his reputation have yet again stirred up waves among the inner ranks of the Fatui. Knowing his type, he will be sure to swiftly depose anyone who dares to challenge his actions. Mm. Hmm. Oh. Come to think of it, there will be a lot of interesting news to be heard the next time we gather for drinks. Care to join me when the time comes, traveler? That's so cryptic, Zhongli. Liyue's prosperity has not merely been built on Rex Lapis's oracles or wisdom. It is also thanks to the countless servants of the Geo Archon who have honored their end of the contract. Of them, Ganyu is the one who has served for the longest time. If you want to know about her past, <laughs> you should ask her about it. <laughs> I fear my wording would not be delicate enough to receive her approval. <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> she is the most impious of the Qixing. But I actually find the conviction of such people quite endearing. The only reason I was able to consider taking a step back from such overarching management of Liu was because there are people like her. People who speak up when they believe themselves to be right and then go and do something decisive about it. Okay, a nod of respect. Despite never having signed a contract with me, she upholds order within many strata of Leo society in her own way, dispelling misconceptions and correcting biases. Should her father one day return from his travels, I imagine that he would be even more delighted than I. Who is her father, damn it? <laughs> it's such a mystery. Time tempers all volition. Yet she would give up everyone for her beliefs. Perhaps it is for this very reason that she has come to where she stands today. Ooh. Should the chance come by me, I too would like to learn of the eternity for which she so earnestly endeavors. It's a little shade. It's a little bit of shade. It's a little bit of shade. As well as ruling over all of Sumeru, the god of wisdom Buer has a duty to guard Ermansoul. Only one who possesses great wisdom could hope to shoulder these responsibilities. All life in Tevat owes her gratitude for saving Ermansoul. More about Jean. -Louis. Why is it that once you finally get a break, rather than taking a rest, you instead come to me? Oh. Is it that you want to hear one of my stories? Maybe you're just comforting to be around or something. <laughs> I don't know. He has a presence to him for sure. Even after Have all he's done. Have you heard of the origin of the Black Cliff Forge? In the past, they would mine the ore veins of Mount Tianhong and then replace the cavities with factory equipment. Tunnels run in all directions throughout the mountain. Some even run to the ruins deep within the earth. Hmm. I doubt there is a person today who could map out all the tunnels. Interesting. A little trivia. Thank you, Zhongli. Have you heard of the origins of the Lantern Rite? Ooh. In a war long ago, the people of Liyue would release lanterns to remind their soldiers of the way home Aww. and to never lose sight of themselves. That's Though, so cute. in this day and age, I doubt there are any that remember. Well, we now do. We the remember God because you told contracts. us. Have you heard of him? <laughs> he has an impressive memory. Oh, does he? He remembers the name of every person he comes across and the date that every ship built in Liyue set sail. Mm. After all, only in being able to do so can he memorize all of the contracts he holds. With that said, not every memory is a happy one. Oh, that's tragic, genuinely. For those that live too long, the friends of days gone by and scenes from their adventures live on in their memories. As such, I have no regrets in meeting you, friend. Mm. Should the day ever come that we are not together, you will continue to shine like gold in my <gasps> eyes. 
Oh my God, remember at the beginning of his lines, he said that it would be, he would see if we would shine like gold. And then he's telling us now at a higher friendship that we do. That's so cool. I, I love that. I enjoy partaking in walks through the city when time permits. I find it very calming. Yes. Just when did this feeling begin? Oh, reminiscing. Lost uh, that memory there. That's a little sad considering the quests. To get people to abide by a contract and act in accordance with the guidelines set out within is simply to ask them to respect the concept of fairness. It is not a large request. How are there those who still do not understand such simplicity? Well, nothing's black and white, Zhongli, unfortunately. It's a human thing. There was <laughs> once a drink I used to enjoy with friends long ago. Is it because the climate has changed? A shame I will never be able to relish in its smooth flavor again. Oh, wow. That's sad. I don't like seafood. <laughs> Just seeing it reminds me of that <laughs> slimy texture <laughs> and that scent that just won't wash off. <laughs> As for why I hate it, <sighs> it's a long story. <laughs> we know so it. Let's just say my memory is a little too good. <laughs> we know it. <laughs> you don't have to repeat it. <laughs> the finest ingredients cooked with true expertise. This is no small feat. <laughs> Okay. The art of gastronomy is a fascinating one. That it appeals to you comes as no surprise. Okay, pretty neutral. Pretty neutral. <laughs> Since you seem to have some time on your hands, <laughs> why don't we find a quiet place and I'll share one of my stories with you? <laughs> that was him trying to be polite, I think. <laughs> Happy birthday. This is a dried glazed lily that came into bloom on the day of your birth. Long oh. ago, the people of Liyue would say that this flower blooms bearing the weight of the beautiful memories and prayers of the land. I believe this to have applied on the day you were born as well. Oh my god. That is so incredibly sweet. That is genuinely so touching. Wow. Oh my goodness. It seems my strength is returning. Not a lot. But enough. Ooh, but enough? My power is growing, and so with it grows the burden on my body. I'm okay. My structure is not the same as that of normal people. Please, do not worry yourself. Ooh, interesting. I see. Using a vision harnesses elements. As far as the common folk are concerned, this is no small feat. So, back then... They were aware of this as they stood beside me. What? He doesn't know. He didn't know that visions harness elemental power. What an interesting perspective. After letting go of my gnosis, I never expected to see a day like this again. <gasps> Thank you, friend. Ah, yes. I have a new contract here. Ooh. Care to take a look at it together? Wait, okay, no, because that's interesting. So is this implying that he's at the same strength he was at when he had his Gnosis, when he's, like, fully ascended, and he's offering a new contract? That's that's interesting. Oh, my gosh, I want to know more about that. Rise! Ooh. Quake! Jesus. Crumble! <laughs> gather! Stabilize! Solidify! Order guide you. This is order. I will have order. <laughs> okay. I know that one. One man's stone is another man's gem. Okay. Unsolicited, and all the more valuable for it. <laughs> Certainly worth the extra mile. Okay. I see your power. <laughs> this Ooh. is getting interesting. That was a little feral, wasn't it? <sighs> Emergency countermeasures aren't my thing. Don't try to rush your enemy. Take mm. a rest. Leave it to me. You shouldn't see me like this. Oh, he doesn't want us to see him weak. Even bedrock can be turned to dust. Wow, okay. 
joining the party? Sure. A walk would be nice. What shall we do? <laughs> cool. Okay, so this is his teapot dialogue. Let's see if there's anything interesting in here. It's been a while. How have you been? <laughs> the atmosphere is pleasant and to my liking. In the time that I've known you, I've come to glean some information about your character and principles. Oh. Your decisions hold my trust. Oh, wow. That's a pretty profound thing for him to say. Coming from him, especially. Okay. Everything comes from nothing, and that which is small becomes large one step at a time. While I've lived many years, I'm not inflexible enough to be incapable of appreciating youthful trends. <laughs> youthful trends. Your taste <laughs> always sets others at ease. Oh, why, thank you. All right, this is a higher friendship level. That would be my pleasure. What would you like to discuss? Um, hear about the, the past. past. Then let us find a free day to take our time and talk. A millennium's worth of stories cannot be told in one moment. If you wish to be comfortable while listening, we'll need a pot of fine tea, two quality chairs, and a pleasing courtyard. We need to prepare a courtyard. <laughs> <laughs> Don't trouble yourself. This place will do just fine. We can sit down and take our time chatting. Wow, I wish uh, we could be a fly on the wall for those conversations. Those stories he tells, apparently tells the traveler. Hmm. So you're interested in my past? I have many stories to tell. What fills an ordinary person with intrigue is but an aspect of daily life for me. This topic is a bit unexpected. I don't know where to start. Anything about you is fine? My story is long and will take up a significant amount of your time. But should you be willing to listen, we can talk over cups of tea. So he's like genuinely willing to talk about it too, which is what I did. I didn't expect As that. As of late, I've been thinking about housing arrangements. <laughs> this residence of yours has unique scenery and elegant furnishings, which I find very attractive. <laughs> I frequently come and go. Excuse my disturbances. Speaking of such things, I ought to contribute something to your realm. Our realm? And so... <laughs> If it does not bother you, I would like to find a gift for you. Aww. A pity. As they say, only a mighty sword is worthy of a mighty hero. A gift befitting you truly is difficult to come by. Oh. Fortunately, Flatterer. we have plenty of time. So there's no need to rush a decision. No need to be so polite or your kindness is enough. Oh, your kindness is enough. While I may no longer be the Geo Archon, I can be considered an old-fashioned citizen of Liu. I have my courtesy. When the time comes, please, accept it without worries. Classic Zhongli etiquette. <laughs> I highly regard your aesthetic. Hmm. <laughs> as long as you agree to accept it. I have witnessed much from you. Our time is boundless. A carefree life relies upon a resolute and clear heart. Being with you like this is truly a lively and joyous experience. Thank you, friend. Wow, that was highest. That was friendship level seven. But, wow. Good morning. Though your journey be fair, do not unduly tire yourself. Good night. The night grows darker, so rest when you can. May you have pleasant dreams. So he's, he's very fond of the Traveler then. Very fond. The people of Liyue follow a multitude of rules when arranging the furniture in a study. These decorative arts can largely be organized into three schools of thought and nine areas of specialization. Here we go. <laughs> you have never heard my explanations on the subject, hmm. and yet you still avoided every taboo. Perhaps some tacit connection is formed between us during our journey together. <laughs> Maybe we're good listeners. The flourishing city of Liyue developed from small streets dotted with a few shops. Just like this one. You have a talent for many pursuits, as well as a boldness of spirit. To me, each day spent with you is as valuable as gold. Oh, no! <laughs> no! I'm now, like... So fond of him in return. Stop. Uh, okay, let's talk about it. 
theories. So I think Zhongli is similar to Venti in the sense that he has a lot of theories surrounding him, right? And this video would be 10 hours long <laughs> uh, if I tried to research every single one. So I'm just gonna kind of give my two cents on it. My theories from the information that I have um, thus far. So I think Zhongli definitely knows way more than he's letting on. That's not really a theory because it was pretty much confirmed in that second quest of his that he absolutely knows stuff and he's purposefully not saying anything because he's bound by this mysterious contract. So to lay it out, he has a contract with the Sarisa, right? And then the second contract, it could be separate. It could be the same one. We don't know. But they said, he said that person. He didn't say Sarista. He said that person um, when he was talking about us having a different journey. So I'm thinking that, <laughs> that maybe, maybe possibly he has a contract with our sibling, our twin. Um, because they've said that they've gone through this world already, there's a very high chance that they encountered Zhongli, right? And since Zhongli has been around for literally forever, I I think that maybe he knows our twin, possibly. And the fact that he is saying, I've always kept my silence, that could be in relation to our twin or, or there's like an overarching contract that he has with this heavenly principles thing. And this, this term has come up a couple times and it's never been really um, defined. And I think that's on purpose, very much so on purpose, but it's Zhang Li <laughs> who is the one who has brought up the heavenly principles when we finished the Liwei Archon quests. Um, he mentioned the heavenly principles in that bit before we went into Inazuma. He is bringing up the heavenly principles almost every single time we really decide to sit down and talk about shit. So I have a feeling he has some kind of eternal bond with the heavenly principles. Cause the way he talks about his position, he said, I am a God of mankind and I am beholden to them. And he's saying in the sense that I, I should be here to witness their rise and fall. Uh, so I'm curious as to what exactly that means. Um, he has said in his voice lines too that, you know, if there comes a day that we're not together, you will always, I will, you will shine like gold in my memories. And it's implying that he'll outlive us, or at least we, maybe we don't die, but for whatever reason, we're no longer together and he will still be remaining here. So <laughs> I don't know. I feel like there's, there's so much to try and deduce, but you could literally take from the information we have, you could take these threads and do insane things with them and uh, reach incredibly, incredibly diverse and some, I'm sure, some bizarre uh, conclusions, but we don't really know. We don't have a lot of information. And I just, I want answers. Like I thought with his quests, we'd get some answers to these like big questions of like our twin and maybe these heavenly principles, maybe some more insight onto what even that is. Is it a group of people? Is it, is it a thing? Like, is it a, like commandments? Like, what is it? Is it, you know what I mean? And we just don't, <laughs> we just don't know. Um, and I thought I was gonna get more answers about that or at least some more information on our twin because Zhongli, again, has been around for a very long time and has probably seen a lot and he would be the person to know that kind of stuff. So, I just, <laughs> I've been left with more questions than answers to be perfectly, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> um, and I'm just thirsty for more. I'm thirsty for more. I'm always thirsty for more when it comes to Zhongli. And I, okay, that sounded weird, but you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I meant it in the lore aspect, uh, you know, okay, I'm going to move on. <laughs> I think when it comes to Zhongli and the Traveler's relationship in the sense of maybe he knows us or because Ye Miko has said some kind of sussy things about like sh we were our, we were predestined, our arrival was predestined. So it, it, it kind of implies that she has some sort of ability to either see in the future or some pattern she's been reading 
Um, maybe this idea of cycles is coming back into play. Maybe Zhongli has a similar thing where there's this kind of cycle thing going on and he maybe is privy to it, but he can't say anything about it because it's like the butterfly effect. You can't, you can't mention anything for fear of it messing up what happens in the future. And he made it quite clear multiple times in his voice lines that he's like, you know, your decisions have my trust. He's always telling us not to rush. You know, he's saying every part of your journey is important. And if it has meaning to you, then it's necessary. Um, and I think that him constantly saying that to us in different ways is important and I'm just keeping it in the back of my mind as I go through the story and everything I'm just making sure that this idea of memory of remembering the truth and he said you're bringing abandoned ideals abandoned stories to the light and so I think there's definitely hidden truths he's trusting us to find whether they benefit him directly is a whole theory in itself we don't know um I get the sense, I mean, the way he said, I am a god of mankind, and he was talking about how he essentially is tied to humanity, um, and he has he's accepted this. And I'm thinking that maybe whatever we do discover, it might not be to his personal benefit, but to the benefit of maybe Tevat or the humans of Tevat, I don't know. His um, full commitment to releasing Li Wei into the hands of humans entirely can also, you know, add to that argument that he he's accepted his bond to us as like humans. I mean, and whatever we discover as the traveler, whatever truth there is hidden in this world, even if it doesn't benefit him, that's okay. Because what we are discovering is more important than maybe him personally. I don't know. Um, especially him and his line about, you know, I understand more than most that, you know, when the door opens, you got to walk through it or something to that effect. It was very, it was very poignant and profound. And I was <laughs> very, I was stunned, uh, honestly, when um, I heard him say those things. But he seems like he's made his peace with whatever decision he's made. He's committed. Um, he's the god of contracts and he apparently made a contract to end all contracts and he's made his peace with it. Um, I don't really know what further conflict there will be in the future involving him, but I do get this sense that he has made his peace, that whatever it is, whatever issues arise or whatever is happening whatever we discover ultimately he's made his peace with it and i <laughs> that's a scary thing and also can be reassuring but it, i guess it, it just depends on if you view him as on our side or not i think zhongli from what i've fully seen not just in the quests but in his voice lines and everything zhongli is definitely on our side is he a squeaky clean being with no past mistakes and no possible, uh, you know, possibilities to make mistakes in the future. Of course not. But, but I do think he is on our side, whatever side that is, whatever that even means, because I don't even know, but I think he is on our side. He's in our corner. Um, and whether, again, whether you take that as something that's comforting or a more of an omen, um, I, I kind of see it as a little bit of both, honestly, because there is something very grounded about Zhongli and very comforting about this assurance he has, this confidence in this decision that he's made. Because I can sense it. Again, he's saying things without saying things, which is what Venti did. But what makes him different than Venti is that Venti felt very separate from the goings on in Mondstadt, right? Not because he didn't care, but because what he literally believes in his principles is his principle is freedom. And that's his line. Just how Zhongli's line is contracts. Like it doesn't matter who you are. If you break the contract, then you're, there's going to be some consequence. 
that's that. <laughs> there's no there's no ands if or buts. So Zhang Li's line is contracts, Venti's line is freedom, and it's just interesting to see how these two different beings who seem to be on the traveler's side kind of react to the to the way that Lumine, or I guess whoever your traveler is, approaches them asking for answers. And both of them have outright lied. Uh, Zhang Li lied. Um, more so lied by omission, but there are, I'm sure, blatant lies he said. And I don't know if he's going to be in future quests or whatever. I haven't done the Chasm quests yet, so I don't have any context. If he's in those, I, I have no idea. I just know that they're kind of in leeway, so there's a possibility he might be in them. But excluding whatever happens in those, um, I really do think that even if he's not telling us the whole truth, I think it's for, there's, I trust that there is a reason. I trust there's a reason he's doing it. Um, I don't trust, I don't know if I trust him, like, I want to, <laughs> like, but there's, I, I trust in this, this assurance, the confidence he has in his decision. And that it's in the end for our benefit. I think. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like very confident about that. And then I think about it too long and then I lose confidence. But I think for the most part, for the most part, I do believe he's in our corner and he's on our side because there is so much genuine fondness in Zhongli. And while he does have the capability to possibly maybe manipulate, I don't think it's really his style. Um, and he's pretty blunt, right? And I don't think he lacks the power uh, to, he can back up his bluntness with his power. You know what I mean? And even though he doesn't have his gnosis, I still think he has a lot more ability than maybe he's letting on. And part of that is, remember when we ascended him, he said, I didn't think there would ever come a day where I felt this again, like, like this again. So, and he talks about drafting a new contract with us. So that is interesting to me because it feels like this next step has happened and it's very open-ended, right? What is this new contract? Why are we doing another one? What is in this new one? You know, what is him gaining more power? How does that change things? That's the real, that's the real question. So I'd love to read those contracts. I'd love to read the old one that we made when we first started working with him. Uh, when you first, like his first line is that you and I have a contract and he's kind of distant but formal and polite. Um, and then as you again gain friendship with him, he warms up very, very much. And um, that final contract to be able to compare and contrast what those entail would be fascinating. Oh, I would love, <laughs> I would love to look at those, but unfortunately we can only, we can only guess. But I think whatever is in this new contract is really important. And the fact that he has gained some personal power back after losing the Gnosis, seems to have changed enough of something for him to either renew the contract and cha or change it. I don't know if he said renew or he said, uh, we, we're drafting a new contract, come take a look at it with me. So I don't know, that's very, <laughs> what's going on there? <laughs> you know, what's going on there? I wanna know about that, please. Please, I want to know more about that. But in terms of theories, I think that really kind of wraps it up. I, 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 there's no answers here, but I think there's a lot of interesting discussion to go, uh, to go on, um, especially going further into the story. And if he's in more of the story, oh Lord, there's just there's so much, there's so much revolving around him. I think he, him and Venti feel very essential to the core arc of Tevat and the Traveler. Like the Traveler's experience has been defined by many things, but Venti and Zhongli in particular feel very central to the heart of what's going on. Whatever is going on, I feel like they are a big part. They're a feeding heart at the center of it with the Traveler. So I can't wait to see where this all goes in the future, but Let's go ahead and hop into the character log where I talk about more of his personality and like personal thoughts on him. So Zhang Li has had quite a journey with me <laughs> because when we did, when we first met him uh, in the Liu Bei quest, I was surprised at his 
appearance because I was expecting this old man when Child was like, oh, we found a consultant and he works at this funeral parlor and <laughs> he knows a lot of stuff about history. I was expecting like this grandpa guy. And I guess Strong Lee is a little bit of a, a, a grandpa, right? But I wasn't expecting his whole situation. I wasn't expecting to come in and seeing this young, handsome man who was very articulate and had this very specific way of how he engaged in conversation and how he looked, how he held himself, how he sat, his posture, and that way he looks out of his eyes and all this stuff. So I was very shocked when I first met him. And then as we go through those leeway quests, we're doing a lot of essentially fetch quests with him, right? Where we're going from shopkeep to shopkeep, we're talking, we're haggling, we're kind of just spending this downtime with him. And I think that was the first time we'd really spent time with a character that wasn't like we weren't fighting something or we weren't discussing a plan to like take over like the abyss or something like that we were really just spending time with him we were going from place to place he was tell us these little <laughs> these little facts about plants and stones and um culture and uh, recite literal paragraphs from textbooks <laughs> it felt like um, just little facts and tidbits and it was nice to spend time with a character who seemed to really be invested in Lumine as a person um, because thus far even though everyone in Mondstadt I feel like appreciates Lumine no one really got to know her for her you know they always needed her for something which you know is, I'm not saying everyone in Mondstadt's an asshole or something but I feel like when we first got to Li Wei Zhang Li was one of the first characters to really try and get to know Lumin or gauge Lumin's personality for himself and invest and kind of have a relationship with us um, outside of just what our goals were. Um, and it wasn't a lot of it, but I felt, I don't know, that's just how I felt. So when we eventually get to uh, the ending of that quest and we get to the bank and we're hot off the heels of child fighting us and essentially going through the whole thing with the chamber and that entire situation so very very hot and heavy with all the action and there's been so much going on and we go into the bank and for me my heart literally shattered when i realized that he was not only the geo archon which i think some part of me had known but when i went into that bank and i saw him with senora there was just i don't know i just felt so betrayed and sad because after everything we had just been through, after everything Lumin had just experienced, to have the one person who I felt actually like attempted to bond with her, it, it all felt like a lie. I think that's what the worst part of it was. Um, and him handing over the Gnosis was such a shock. Obviously, um, with in hindsight, with more knowledge, especially after Zhang Li's first quest, we learn that he chose to do what he did because it was what he thought was going to be keeping it was in leeway's best interest for them to take the reins from him at least that's what he thought and the only way he felt he could do that was by essentially pushing leeway to fend for themselves um and they weren't like defenseless obviously with the chamber and ning wong and beto and <laughs> everyone working together um the adepti as well stepping in um, and Lumine, honestly, spearheading a lot of the action as well. Um, Li Wei did pull through, but it was really rough. And um, I think that ruthlessness is what a lot of people, at least me, I was just stunned by because when we spent time with Zhang Li, <laughs> he was this soft, um, not old man, but he had this like this old soul vibe and it felt like he really just, he didn't have that ruthlessness in him, at least to me. And so I felt like I didn't know him anymore. And that kind of also felt like a loss and a shock. So <laughs> having Lumine finally come to a place, at least in my head, where I think she's at emotionally, because I, again, am very invested in the emotional journey of the characters and Lumine and stuff like that. I think where she is at now in that first quest, we get to a point where she can view Zhang Li as not an entire lie. Like, obviously what he did was intense, but it was necessary. And I think Lumine also sees the value in what he did, even if <laughs> even if I was very shocked at it. Um, 
the whole thing with Havria, I think was really eye-opening in how I view him because there was a lot of respect there, um, which contradicted this idea that at least how I had seen him, this like really harsh version of him that lived in my head of this like ruthless guy who tested a city and risked innocent lives to not prove a point, but to to get the re the result he wanted. It felt like he risked a lot and it was a gamble that I didn't think was entirely worth it. Like, yes, it worked out, but what if it didn't? And obviously I think now he would have stepped in, but the point is, I think the way he spoke about Havria and the respect he had for her, that even though she wasn't the strongest of the gods, it didn't matter. And this ruthlessness that I had of <laughs> in my head, it kind of melted a little bit. Obviously, I still think Zhongli is very capable of ruthlessness because when, yes, he fought the <laughs> asshole <laughs> in the tomb, um, but he also decided to, you know, punish the woman who was the devotee of the goddess of salt with false information due to, you know, conjecture and the changing of legends and myths being passed down over generations. Um, he told her what really happened as a punishment for her breaking the contract. There was a moment where I was like, is he going to actually physically harm her? Like would he, I mean, most of me was like, there's no way he would raise a hand against a defenseless, unarmed person who's willingly submitting to punishment for breaking a contract. But there was a second where I was like, is he really going to hurt her? Um, and I think that that feralness, or I don't know if feral is the right word, but ruthlessness, maybe that hard edge, uh, I think still lives in him, even when he warms up to us and he's wanting to chat with us about like his stories and his life and all this stuff and the teapot dialogue and even at his warmest I still think Zhongli is very capable of the ruthlessness he employed in that quest um because the knife only comes out when uh a contract is broken like to me his ruthlessness isn't baseless and I think that's what I originally thought when we first finished that leeway archon quest I was like oh my god he was just not that his ruthlessness had no meaning or he did it randomly I'm not saying that but I felt like ruthlessness was a more core trait of him um and it overrode uh even things like mercy or stuff like that but I don't think that's true and I think what the Havria quest showed me is his ruthlessness is only brought out when he's supposed to uphold a contract a contract has been broken or fairness has been compromised. I think those three things are the only times he really pulls out his ruthlessness to the degree that we've seen. Um, and I think that maybe that could be a fault or a, a fatal flaw. You know, he's beholden to his word. And while that can be a strength for sure, I think there are certain instances where black and white, it does, you know, black and white doesn't always exist. There's a lot of gray area, especially when it comes to humans and how we <laughs> stumble through life. So to a God, you know, black and white maybe makes sense, but with humans, it that's it makes a little less sense because most things normally aren't one thing or the other. And I think that's part of what makes Zhongli interesting is that he has spent so much time among us, but truly still struggles to comprehend our complexity in the sense that, you know, <laughs> good and evil or right and wrong or fair or not fair, those lines aren't always strong or, you know, <laughs> made of stone you know sometimes it's just a, a flimsy stick in the sand <laughs> that's separating those uh those two different ideals or opposites in that sense so i don't know i think it'll be interesting to see more of zhongli in the future i think it'll be interesting to see if he continues to struggle with this dichotomy of humans i think what allowed me though to really reconcile with him is this warmth that I saw like him being 
kind to us when we first met him was something that I originally thought after the bank scene was a lie. I thought that was all fake. I thought he just manipulated us just like Child did. But that's not true. Like when we, again, went through the Hover request, and I will talk about the act two in a second. Um, but all of his voice lines and stuff, there is genuine fondness he has for the Traveler. Like he genuinely cares about us and our well-being and what happens to us and our journey he i think is very dedicated to protecting our journey whatever that entails is up to us but i think like i don't think he's trying to guide us one way or the other i think he's very adamant about not engaging just like venti he's not going to cross that line of trying to influence us one way or the other but he is adamant about protecting our journey and protecting us on our journey. Um, and I think that there is something very assuring about that. So that warmth is true. Him spending time with us, him asking about our, you know, Lumine's personality and, or not her personality, but getting to know her, or spending time with her, sharing things about the world, that is true and that remains true. So I renege my statements, okay, from part 11 when I was like, oh, it was all a lie and he doesn't really care. <laughs> I think he does. I think, you know, the high friendship level definitely proves that statement false, right? I think he really does care. Um, and I think there is a genuine warmth to him, but there is that knife that he, <laughs> there is that sharp edge that he has that I don't think will ever go away because it's just inherently who he is. Um, and it's not, uh, the ruthlessness isn't born of evil. It isn't born of malcontent or ill will. I think it's simply just part of the riddle of his being. You know what I mean? It's just part of who he is. Uh, and that contracts, that's his whole thing, right? That's all that he believes in, the principles that he lives by and he has ruled by and instilled upon his people for centuries and centuries. Now, taking into context everything we learned in the second act, oh boy. <laughs> the statements he made in the first act about us being the key to the truth and that we will be the receptacle, essentially the the journal, Tavot's journal, right? We'll be the ones that hold the truth and we'll carry that with us through our journey and beyond. Whatever beyond means, because I still don't know, Zhongli made it sound like there was a beyond, but we will know the truth. And by us knowing the truth, therefore immortalizes it. And it is some, that is something Zhongli cares a lot about. He cares about Lumine, I think personally, but I also think he really cares about the idea that we will take the truth with us and that that truth is the naked truth. It's unaltered, it's um, not messed with, it's not colored one way or the other. There's no bias, I mean, it's simply what it is. And I think he cares a lot about that. Um, legacy is a big part of Zhongli, I think, and the decisions that he makes, I think, revolve around legacy and what will be left behind and what will become and what was all wrapped up <laughs> and he wants that all wrapped up in our brains <laughs> to be kept there almost like a safe you know for safekeeping um so i think that statement he made at the end of act one is essentially was expanded upon in the second act where we essentially go through all this um really interesting conjecture with uh kunjun or as the as we interacted with him he wasn't actually kunjun he was Azdaha and um, all the talk about memory of stone and this concept of erosion is truly is truly scary. And Zhongli's intensity about wanting to maintain the truth as it is um, makes more sense because he is contending with this idea of erosion um, and that he will one day I don't know, maybe er be eroded himself. When we asked him about it, he said something really interesting. He said, you know, my erosion is having to put down old friends. Um, and so erosion kind of has this like double meaning or not double, but it has like multiple layers to it. It's kind of ambiguous, right? There's no one definition of it. 
um, Azdaha's erosion is not the same erosion Zhongli says he's dealing with. So I don't know. I think I think it's interesting. I think there's more to it. Erosion might be able to be applied to other characters. Like when we were reading about, you know, the Shogun with the puppet, that could have been a form of erosion. It, the a word erosion wasn't ever used in the Inazuma quests. I haven't done her character quests yet, so maybe that word will come up in those quests. But um, the idea of erosion and that the truth is being lost, I think is something that is a overarching motif in Jean Lee's quests. This idea that the truth will be lost, that a lot of truths have already been lost, but we are the ones that can find it, that can bring it to the light, he said. So whatever that means. <laughs> and um, bringing it to the light, heavenly principles, heaven, there's light, the light of heaven. We are bringing truth into the light of heaven under the heavenly principles or something like that. I don't know. That could be, uh, that's more theory territory, but you know what I mean? There's a lot of interesting um, possibilities that those statements could mean. So <laughs> I'm very excited to see more of Zhang Li. I really do care about him. I think that's probably, this is probably one of the biggest jumps I've had is that I really thought that, I mean, obviously I didn't have the same um, bitterness towards him that I did that I had towards like child who was like openly antagonistic and we didn't really have any good relationship with him prior to him trying to kill us <laughs> but um with Zhang Li we did have an established relationship before he uh we found out that he was working with Senora so I don't know I I think that me trying to reconcile with him went smoother than I thought it was gonna go because I really do love him as a character. I think he's just objectively, like I'm leaving immersed Nikki brain and I'm like looking at this from just a player standpoint, like above the story as a bird's eye view. He's a very compelling character and super, super cool. I, I really want to see more of him. He interests me. Um, yeah, sure, he's hot. But I think like in terms of just his character and what his character does for the narrative and for the traveler specifically I think is really interesting and characters like him are like a touchstone in the story where you keep coming back to him just like I feel like Venti is a touchstone as well we'll come back to Venti and we'll always come back to Venti and to Mondstadt and I think the same goes for Liwei we will always come back to Zhongli we will always come back to Liwei there is that touchstone in the narrative and um I think it'll hold a very special place in my heart going forward, um, as I think it does for many people who play. <laughs> I think Zhongli means a lot to a lot of people. Um, and I understand now. I think it was hard to, like when I first released part 11 and I had this really, um, you know, emotional reaction because I'd really attached to Zhongli as a character. And through Lumine, I thought, you know, as I, I guess role playing is, a, is the word for it, but I get very um, immersed in Lumine's head. And, you know, I think to me, <laughs> she really bonded with Zhongli. And then when all that happened in part 11 and the, you know, the bank thing, it really was a shock. I don't know. I was like, when people were commenting and saying, well, there's all this stuff that you, all his voice lines and all this other stuff, I was like, wow, this is a lot. And I felt out of my depth. And so I was really looking forward to these quests because everyone was had these really, like you guys really had these fantastic opinions and not like yelling at me or anything, but you guys were genuinely so passionate. And whenever I get responses like that, I'm like, okay, there's something to this, right? There is some something I'm missing or something I haven't experienced yet. I, I hadn't experienced his story quests yet. So there was a lot of depth I was missing, but I get it now. Like after experiencing these quests and especially reading up on his lore and his voice lines, there's genuine warmth to him. And I get it because I was thinking to myself, how are these people so fond of someone who's so ruthless? And obviously not everyone views characters the same way. Some people just like characters because they're interesting and not because they're emotionally, you know, putting their uh, morals onto a character or something like that, which is totally valid, by the way. Um, 
But I was like, for people who did say that they were emotionally very invested in Zhongli, I was like, there's such a ruthlessness to him. Where are they getting all this warmth and fondness that they were saying? And I now, <laughs> I got to experience it. <laughs> so I'm very happy. Um, he's definitely one of my favorite characters. Um, he, I love characters just as an aside, like personally, I love characters that have deep historical ties to a place or to uh, the arc. They have this like really deep rooted importance. Um, they aren't the main character, but they are a really important aspect of the story. Um, and Zhongli is that, <laughs> he is exactly that. So I just love characters like this. Um, morally gray characters are very interesting too, to invest in and to follow along and you, you want to root for them, you know? So I just really, I just really love him and his lore, his lore is so cool. Like all of the, um, lore regarding the Yakshas and Guizong and all of the other, um, Adepti that he essentially built Li Wei beside is so fascinating. It gives off this feeling of like family and at least community, this strong sense of community. And I think that's one of the first things we learn about Li Wei. And when we come in um, to Li Wei for the first time and we're talking to um, Child and we talk to Zhang Li and he's saying that there's all these historical importance placed on certain uh, um, events and uh, holidays and celebrations. And I think I'm really starting to understand the depth of those you know, the importance of those things and that he built that <laughs> brick by brick. He built this culture and these people and this history. He is directly tied and responsible for it. And what an amazing legacy. You know what I mean? Like you look at Leeway and what it's become now and to know that he built that from the ground up, no matter how he built it, it's still his. And that's, such a beautiful thing, right? I think there's something very um, inspiring about that is that I feel like everybody deep down wants to leave some kind of mark, whether, you know, not everyone wants to be famous, that's not what I mean, or do some insanely great deed and go down in history books for, but I think everybody has this desire to connect with their community, no matter how large or small that community is, and to really leave their mark on people and have some part of them, whether, you know, it's directly involved with them or not, they want to be felt by other people and they want some kind of a legacy. And um, I think that that's maybe too what a lot of people relate to, or at least are awed by, <laughs> is this idea of legacy. And it's such a human thing, you know? And I think that's what is so interesting is that Zhongli, while very fond of humans, he values humans, but he doesn't fully understand them. And yet he is the epitome of legacy, which I think is a very human trait. We want to be remembered. We want to have some part of us stay behind when we're gone. Um, and that's, <laughs> that's, it's not just such a cool little thing that he is legacy. He is Morax, right? He is Leeway. He is Mora. He is the gold in the, the land. I think that him saying that to, to us, um, the traveler constantly is um, a genuine term of endearment. <laughs> I think it's his way of being very, very fond of us. And in turn, I think we think of Zhongli that way, or at least not everybody, I'm sure. I'm sure some people don't like him still, which is valid too. Um, but I have definitely hopped on the Zhongli bandwagon <laughs> and I get it. I get it. I very much love him, um, objectively as a person playing a video game and as immersed Nikki in Lumine's brain, I think she also cares very much for Zhongli and places a lot of trust in him. Even again, even if he's not perfect, even if he's not always the most reassuring <laughs> in um, certain things, I think she trusts in him and he definitely trusts her. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty fucking cool. And I cannot wait <laughs> to see more of him. And when his banner comes out, I am wishing for that motherfucker. <laughs>
Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. If you did, as always, I very much appreciate you spending your time with me. Um, this was a long one. This was a hella long one. I'm so sorry it was so late, but I genuinely was working my ass off on it. I wasn't like being lazy. <laughs> I was genuinely cranking out and like editing and really pushing to get this out as soon as I could without dropping the quality um, because I do have a standard for myself and I just, I would rather work on it a little more and put out something I'm proud of than rush it and get you something that's kind of subpar um, that I would hate <laughs> uh, later. So again, thank you for being patient. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do want to comment, please do, because I do love reading your comments. I haven't been able to respond to a lot of them lately because I've been working so hard on this video, but I promise you I will read. I do read all of them and I do try to respond to every single one. So. Again, please let me know what your thoughts are on Zhongli. I know everybody has different opinions and that's what's so fascinating. I love discussing characters because I think every character, like it, they mean something different to everybody. Even if two people like the same character, they can have totally different reasons for loving that character. And that's so cool. I just, I love talking about that kind of stuff. So please share your thoughts. Um, do be mindful of other people, obviously. You guys are pretty good about this. Um, I haven't seen anyone like really be an asshole in the comments, uh, but people having different opinions is totally fine. Even if they don't like them, the same character, I mean, it's, it's not a big deal. Everyone has different feelings about characters. That's the point. Characters are supposed to make us feel shit. So everyone's feeling different things. Um, next videos that are going to be out, or video I should say, is Raiden's story quests and I will be combining her acts as well. So that'll be another like five hour video. Um, again, please forgive me if it's a little late. Uh, I do work my very hardest to get them out on time. Um, but bigger projects like this, they really are <laughs> time consuming. Even if I'm working like from 9am to like 9pm, it's still, it's still just a lot of footage to get through. So I really appreciate if you watched all the way through. Just watching it really helps. Um, a like is nice as well if you did enjoy, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I, this is more of a passion project than it is like me trying to get views. So if you did enjoy it, I'd love to hear your thoughts on my thoughts in the comments or your own personal opinions on Zhongli and whether you love him, you like him, or you're neutral or you just really don't like him. <laughs> My socials are all in the description as well as the Discord link. If you want kind of um, more like moment to moment updates on like if a video is gonna be late or anything like that, I do regularly update the Discord. I'm pretty active there too. So if you wanna at me and say hello, feel free to, I'd love to chat. Um, everyone's pretty chill there. So if you wanna <laughs> hang out with the community a little bit, you're welcome to. Or if you wanna lurk, that's fine too. I see you, you're all good. <laughs> Um, my Patreon link is also down in the description. So if you want to check that out, go ahead. There's not very much there, but I, I'm split in a lot of different ways. I am trying to get out a lantern right thing for Patreon. Um, so expect that in the uh, somewhat near, <laughs> near future. I am really, really trying. Okay. Um, but I, since this is like a huge project, it's the biggest thing I've ever done. And Raiden's video is going to be a huge video. Um, it's probably not going to come immediately, but I hope you guys are all enjoying Lantern, right? And I will see you in the next one.